Ooh, baby. Man, I'm excited for today's. Ooh, I'm excited. So, so excited to try out Fractured Veil. Um, where is that music at? Pew. There we go. Nice, chill music. Hello, everybody. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. I'm on time for once. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna make it exactly before four o'clock because we gotta get some, uh, gotta get a little bit DST in before we get some fractured veil. I wanted to kind of get everybody ready to go here and excited. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. epsilon, thank you for the follow. Jester, thank you for the follow. And dragons, thank you for the follow. Random chronic and uh, Genesis, thank you for the follow. Hi Serenity, hi Haas, hi Kawhi, hi Moby. How you guys doing today? Um. I did not realize that Fractured Veil was 70 gigs. <laughs> I was like, oh damn, this is a massive game. So you're getting random numbers calling you? Oops. Still really, still really light out. Okay, so from what I remember, long day, man, long day. Yeah, just got, just gross spam callers like leaving me voice messages. Right now, I get a lot of because uh, there's a there's like a election going on, so I get a lot of. Did you know that? And I'm just like, really. But other than that, that's all I get really now. Nobody really leaves me voicemails anymore. I feel like since text messaging has become the norm, it's pretty rare that we get that I usually get a a voicemail. Um, where did we put the little base? Right there. Pretty much never get them. Like all of a sudden, I got like three to four. Oh yeah, they were supposed to leave me that little ageless clock as well too. Oh well, I didn't get a chance to do that, so I'll make a, probably make another one when I can. Um, this is between the two areas. This is probably a really really bad place to to make a a base. Um, oh, I need to get cut down some trees. I probably should have done that. Anyway, so how's everyone's day? Um, I went back in and traded the rest of my <laughs> the rest of my magic cards and a bunch of hockey cards and got rid of all those. So I had to say goodbye to those. And then Friday, I'm gonna bring in uh, one of my Pokemon sets and say goodbye to those as well too. Maybe say goodbye to those, we don't know yet. I haven't signed up for anything recently. Never added my number anywhere, so no idea why I started. Most of the time when it comes to random calling, a lot of companies pay for things so they'll be like hey uh hey blank can i have you know 75 million numbers hey kendrick and they'll then pay like you know 10 cents a number and they pay like 7 million and they get a bunch of phone numbers that's usually how a lot of these places work and then eventually you're like numbers on like a on like a bot list or like a call list that's generally how it works it doesn't matter if you think your number's nowhere. If you've ever registered your number for anything, or sometimes if you, it depends on your phone plan as well too. Some phone plans have a thing where it says unless otherwise authorized, your phone is registered to a public database. I played Omari all day. Omari all day. I've been trying to like distract myself and get all the achievements. Yeah. Hosh, you said you have tomorrow off, I think, right? Got screwed out of watching the stream last night. How come? What happened? Your internet wasn't working or something? Get out of here, bees. Go home. Lightning hit the cable box. Ooh, damn. Did it destroy like the modem plus destroy your router at the, at the same time too? Hey, Friday off. Don't work, don't work till Saturday. Nice. That's got to be a little bit of a relief. Man, I got Taco Bell for Taco Tuesday. Very happy I did. I originally wanted, I originally wanted something else though. Like I wanted to get, um, let me put my other music on. I wanted to get, you know what? I should change my, my soundtrack up. Let's see. Let's go to Streamlabs. Let's go to, ooh, they have a Halloween soundtrack now? What the? Since when do they do that? That's interesting. Halloween dubstep. Instrumentals, happy beats. I'll go to happy beats. Anyway, sorry. Um, that's pretty cool that that uh, base label or base rebels is actually adding that. Um, 
You're just so weird, like, Trav, like, all of a sudden, all the... Yeah, I don't know why you're... I, honestly, that's probably what it is, though, Moby. It's just you're on a call list. Hey, Jesse, how's it going? Damn it, hold on. What was I going to say? <laughs> I know, I wanted butter chicken, and then the place was closed. They're doing, like, renovations or something at the place. So, I got Taco, Taco Bell instead, which actually, whatever, it's fine. I haven't had Taco Bell in a while, anyways. I almost got the Dorito Crunch thing. Um, but then I was like, well, I don't really know if I am going to eat it. So they must've been hiding from like adding them for years. Then sometimes it could be one of those things where out of nowhere, the company decided to start using like the calls and start like, you know, just calling people out of nowhere. It's hard to say why people would randomly just call you. I don't know. I don't know. All you can do though, like with Google phones, generally it'll tell you like, this is a spam call. Like registered blah 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 because the way that google does it is like their phone system they have phone systems like automatically pick up numbers that are trying to phone them and they get auto registered as you know clickbait phone numbers and then google registers them and also other people putting the numbers on their block list then those numbers get blocked they've been calling you in the morning too damn that's annoying I've been thinking about getting one of those snack subscriptions. They look interesting. Ooh, which one? Which one? Which one? Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. Yeah, which snack one? Are you gonna get like a Japanese crate or something like that? If I could recommend one, I'll try to get one that doesn't just have only ramen in it. I did that when I got the, when I did that one, I, when I got one of them and I would tell you like, it was too much ramen. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to ever eat this much ramen. The candy ones are always like reassuring though. Either Tokyo treat or like universal yums. They have some really good variety. Yeah. Tokyo treats really good. Have they come down in price? Or are they still pretty, uh, pretty up there? Like usually 30 bucks or so, which is not that bad actually. It's just, you know, just curious. Um, I need one more and then a few of those. I think it's still 30 bucks. That's not that bad. I know that Amazon has like their own variety of them or something, but I don't know um, how much I would trust those ones past like the actual Am like the actual Tokyo treat ones. I always find the ones that are on online that have like been established for a long time or way better. Snacks. Hi, Dan Diana. I will start up stream readers here in like two or three minutes. I don't know why I made rope when I already had a bunch of rope on me. Okay, let's make one single. Hey, Kiwi. One single fun chest. If I get one, I'll send a picture on Discord. Yeah, and uh, and also one little treat as well too. <laughs> one little nibble. Hey, running. How you doing? Oh, Trav. In stream readers, the orange skin got unlocked for Archer. Oh, ooh. Oh, I actually can't get those skins though. Yeah. So apparently, the way it works for if you're a captain. You don't get those until the very end. So I have to wait until the very end to find out how far my my thing advances. Chat gets one crumb. I'll take it. I'll take it. Which kind of makes sense, right? Because you're trying to like the... You don't want to get it. Because then I guess the like captains could just be like, all right, we're over and done with. I think if your own team unlocks it, you get your own. Yeah, I th no, it says that all captains will receive all skins at the end of the at, at the end of the thing. It yeah, no, it does say that. If you read it, it says that it says all captains will receive all unlocks at the end of the week, or at the end of the event, I should say. But it it said all skins from other teams. Let me double check. Yeah, double check because I'm pretty sure it's all skins. Get some chocolate chip cookies. Nah, nah, nah. Get rid of those. Macadamia nut all the way. Macadamia nut. Matt Damon. 
Where is a bunch of trees that I can chop down? I guess like right here, there's kind of decent amount. Ooh, I'm getting nervous for Fractured Veil. Captain's accounts receive skins for the teams they don't belong to when the Sportia concludes. Yeah, exactly. So they receive from your team uh, skins and also everybody else's. Do you know what I mean? So then you get all of them. Macadamia nuts like themselves are so much more expensive to make though. Yeah, they are. They are, they're pricey. But they're so much better than like regular chocolate chip though. But now you'd get the orange one. I'd have to look I'd have to look at it and see since you're in the orange team. I don't know. Let me see. Do I Okay, so I go to my character info. It doesn't tell me anything about that. Hmm. All I care about right now though is like my skin coming out on on Friday. <laughs> That's all I care about. Chaos is ready. The Pikachu one is the most important one. I'm really curious if somebody else is gonna. Whoa! Kiwi! Oh, I'm gonna die. Oh, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. I'm really curious if somebody else, like outside of our community, is gonna really like the skins. Damn it cheap but i mean other skins would be nice if you don't really have a skin for that unit though true 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 okay where's the revive at right here i haven't used it yet so i can just do it right there it's too adorable yeah because like sometimes i do see other skins and i'm like oh that's really cool i definitely want to like i definitely want that one day and i mean there's no other pikachus that i can find so and if people like archers, what, what, how come sk some skins are f like $5 on stream readers and then some skins are, um, and then some skins are like 10. I love the sheep or beast one skin one besides the derpy one. I found Trav. Yeah. Beside that one. <laughs> The half skins are five, while the t full are ten. Oh, okay. Depends on if it's a head full skin or not. Yeah. Yeah, like I always wonder. I bet you, like, if you got into early with stream raiders and you were making your own, like, you had your own skins and stuff like that from like the beginning, which I probably should have done, but I did never really looked into the game at the beginning. Um, chances are you're I'll probably. A lot of your skins are out there. But I guess now there's more saturation because like that means that there's more people playing the game and more people wanting to get different skins, right? Do they ever do like half off sales where they give you, ooh, what's this? Where they give you like 50% off a skin of your choice or something? Blue mushroom. Um, I'm going to put something here. There have been a handful of, I don't think so, unless it's an event, maybe. Yeah, I just thought it'd be kind of a cool idea, right? Like, who cares? Because I know it's like 50-50 revenue or something. But I don't care. Like, I'd rather more people have, have the skin, right? I don't care about the revenue. I just think it's really cool if, like, somebody's using your skin that you don't even know who they are. You know what I mean? You're like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> Speaking of which, let's launch Stream Raiders. Um, I'm not gonna switch, well, I guess I can switch over because I'm just chopping down trees. These are all the gold chests I thought. Oh no, the green chest is right there, that's right. All right, let's go. Unit's going down. You can put some more units behind us if you wanna have your archers in the back or something. Put your units down, everybody. Exclamation mark, um, exclamation mark, SR. Don't forget dungeons tomorrow, I think, too, Trav. Yeah, I'm going to do dungeons so much tomorrow. Lenny, you're beautiful. How you doing? 
Yeah, tomorrow I'm going to be do doing dungeons exclusively. Kind of why I want to find out like when my... I kind of want to find out when my skin's going to arrive because I'd like to, you know, like to show that off too. Um, we also got to figure out, uh, they're telling us that we have to figure out what, what we want to have for the head skin as well. So I got to figure that out also. Do, 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 do. Like so I don't know if we actually, if we ended up deciding what we wanted for the head skin. Hey squids. Because I kept thinking like, oh, I want Centurion. This new one though, this new skin, or this new um, whatever they're bringing out, maybe I can do one for that. What's it called again? What was the name of it? Of the new unit they're making? A saint. Hmm. Derp as a head. Yeah, I'll have to think of it. I was like looking through all of our, I was thinking of like maybe the all fun sus one, but I don't know, maybe the, it's just a head skin. So it has to go with something. You have to admit Derby Saber as a head would look really funny though. It would. As which, <laughs> I'll look and choose. It's only the head skin. So it's not like it's too, too crazy to choose from. Like when we were choosing, those are natural, right? Those are not from chat. Like when we were choosing the full skin, the reason why it was actually hard to do, what a joinable world, hey Tal, was because it was a, it was like the big, it was like the the big skin for stream raiders, so it was like hard to be like, okay, I want this one, and because I had to like sit there and you know pick different ones, but the boss one will unlock a ton of those. Because it's easy to do 25, like kill 25. Well, not easy, but it's time consuming. Hey, Sky. Whoa, what the heck? Sky, what you been up to? Because it's, you know, just time consuming to kill a lot of those. Wait a minute. I think if I press. Oh, look at that. What? That is so amazing. That is so cool, eh? Wow. Wowee. Isn't that awesome? Dude, man, this mod is so cool. Were you not here when I when I downloaded that mod? It's an auto sort mod for your inventory. You press you press one key and then it automatically um it automatically sorts your in, your inventory completely. Oh, nice guy. That's cool. It's kind of like Centuria. I don't like the spots it sorts, though. Uh, so that's a cool thing, Tal. You can actually customize it yourself. Yeah, it's all customizable. I didn't I didn't do it, though, because I forgot to. You can be like, I want weapons first, or blank, blank, blank. You can organize everything. So twigs, grass, and yep, 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 yep. I never edited. I should probably have done that though. I also have to change the bind key too. I'm gonna just keep using it more and more. So I want my utility at the very end. Sorry, my resources at the very end. Thank you for getting one log. Very nice of you. Um, chop more trees or get more food. I think we need more food. So I'm going to go get some food. Hmm. Yeah. I'm going to leave the time pieces with you, Kiwi. Just try not to lose them. But if you can make us some utility, that'd be awesome. Here. I'll take an ex extra ageless watch and... Maybe two of them, and then the rest you can do whatever you want with. It's always so interesting to see where people place their stuff in their hotbars. I I don't know what made me start to place the stuff like this. Honestly, I think it was more so. Um, I think it was more so the fact that I was like, 
oh hey like look this person's doing it like this i'm gonna copy them when possible food always should be in a backpack though yeah because i i vaguely remember looking at at a stream of somebody and they place their stuff like this. And I was like, I'm going to do the exact same. And then ever since then, I just copied it. Do, 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 do. more cactus i learned my lesson last time not to take all the cactus out of here you know leave some around i tend to have my tools at the end of my torches at the beginning of so if, oh yeah I, I tend to put stuff at the most my regular hot bar and stuff i don't use in my backpack same here my backpack is like hey if this thing gets burned up psh, i don't care Wait, so how many extra ageless watches do you want? Just two. He's fine. <laughs> I got one extra one so far. Cool. I'm really excited to see this game with what type of background music it, it has. Okay, so... I want everyone's honest opinion. Do you guys like when games have really good soundtracks? Like, is that something that you guys care about or no? Like if a game has like a really good soundtrack, does that really matter to you? I would say I care about it a lot. Like I care about it to the point where if I could have, if I could have the background noise going with the game and like people can hear it for me as a streamer it matters if i was playing by myself and like nobody was watching me play then it, i didn't want to care about it that much but because i stream that's the only reason why i care about it however some games the soundtracks itself are, isn't as important but it's always nice to have good music though yeah Drop a little glommy over here. Okay, get myself my little sanity up. Mm -mm -mm. You know what? Her, she doesn't even like really. She doesn't even really require that much maintenance when it comes to certain things. Like, I find that with Wanda, you know, as long as you have a little bit of cactus, you're fine. But we're telling games though, a good soundtrack is definitely a must. Oh, for sure. Thank you. 
Survival games are still pretty good. MMOs, I always find, have really, really good soundtracks in them. There's something with MMOs that every time I, I get into one, I'm like, oh yeah, that's that's some good sound. That's that's some good music. Do, 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 do. Yeah, lots of intense music too. Oh, for sure, ba like boss battles and stuff. Just a heads up, at 4.25, I will be switching to Fractured Veil. I just wanted to start getting a uh, leg up on our, on our server. Where is some more... So yeah, chat, just remember that today we have that exclusive uh, gameplay for Fractured Veil vale as well too. So that's going to be starting here um, in about 10 minutes or so, about 13 minutes or so. Um, I just wanted to get a little bit of DST in here so then that way um, we were able to get started for tonight's stream. Because on tonight's stream I'm going to play DST of course, but I wanted to at least get the base started so that way tonight we didn't come in like, uh, what are we doing? So. Yeah, so we're doing, uh, play, I, I don't know how long we're playing Fractured Veil vale for, probably maybe about one and a half, two hours or something, uh, just to kind of see, you know, what it's about, hopefully like test a lot of mechanics and stuff. I'm really interested to see it, like how, um, how smooth the gameplay is. I'm interested to see how, um, basically like, I, I don't know, like compared to, here's the thing, like I, obviously I'm going to try comparing it a lot to Seven Days to Die. But, I mean, as right now, Seven Days to Die is definitely, like, graphic-wise and gameplay-wise. Oh, my God. It definitely needs a lot of work, so. And from the screenshots that I saw of Fracture Veil, it definitely looks pretty impressive. Seven Days of Lag, yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I don't know. That's why I'm hoping for A20 for Seven Days to Die, that they actually, like, improve and like work on the performance more than just like making the game look more pretty. Seven Days never excited me graphically. The, the, the thing with Seven Days is that Seven Days that I came out and it looked bad because they used like an old, I don't even know what they did for their stuff. Then they released more and more updates and it still looked bad. And then I was just like, what the heck? Why do they keep releasing updates to make the, and like the game doesn't look any better. More like Icarus. <laughs> hey, what's up, Legion? So, like, I don't know if... I don't know if A20 is going to make... It does look like it's going to make it a lot better for 7 Days to Die, but you can make a game look really, really good, comparably, but, you know, is the game going to run any better, though? It sucks that a lot of games seem to not be optimized anymore. Usually, like, usually when it comes to... High, like, it, com compared to, like, Back for Blood, that game is really optimized. It just has like, a little bit of tweaks that need to be fixed in it. Right, that's why they have alphas. That's why they have betas. So then that way they're able to test out all the bugs and people report in and say, look, I'm having problems with this or this peripheral or whatever. Neon, you're beautiful. Seven days looks fun to play, but it's so unoptimized. Yeah, it is. Well, the the thing with seven days to die is it requires for a game that does not have like really, really good graphics, it requires a shit ton of like higher end graphics, you know, which is really weird because the game is, looks, in my opinion, 70s that I looks a lot uglier than like a game like The Forest and stuff. So it's kind of just, I don't know. But with A20, it looks like they're probably going to be working on a few things anyway, so that's better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just recently I've been running into games that need more optimization. Like which games? I find that like, I, I mean, what games have we, I guess, I'm trying to think of some games that we played recently where I, I thought about that. I'm coming back with 
Just some twigs. They should stop making new updates and focusing on fixed frame drops and bugs. Yeah, I think that's what that's what their plan was. I thought, but after they're doing like these this huge revamp, that's why I think A20 is such a big update for seven days. You know what does suck though for seven days to die is that anybody that has seven days to die on console can't play past like 1.13. You know how crappy that is to like watch the game grow and then you can't actually get any updates on console. Stream readers ready? 13 minutes for stream readers. Chat stream readers exclamation mark SR go 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 go. But the first game I really dealt with that it need optimization is Starbound. It's so bad. There's some huge bottlenecking happening. I never like I never played too much Starbound, so I can't say if the game ever lagged for me. Honestly, the game the one of the one of the worst games that's ever lagged for me has been Seven Days to Die. That game is like my number one nemesis for lagging and and whatever else. Past that, I never really had any issues with any other game, other than maybe like when I was playing PUBG, and that's the thing. PUBG and Seven Days to Die they kind of share the same kind of graphics in a way. Which sucks. Well, not really, because PUBG is a little bit nicer. Which sucks because it used to be optimized until they officially released it. Okay. At home, drop these little things off. In beta, Starbound used to be perfectly fine, but they usually officially released it. Stopped working for a lot of users. So how come Starbound never like made it? Heck yeah, we got a kitchen, sorta. <laughs> nice, nice. No bear juice allowed in the kitchen this time, though. Well, let me put things in the chest. Gotta debug my thing later, so I just gotta put my stuff in here. Okay. Do, 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 do. Because Chucklefish screwed up. Yeah. There we go. And then here's some twigs. Reverse my age. The biggest mistakes was like not them optimizing. Oh, check for shot trap. Is that a dev? It is. Yep. Yep. I will pull them in. Don't worry. Serenity. What? Like when I jump in the game. Yeah, I told them to get ready around like uh, 425. So that, that way, you know, we have a few minutes to kind of prepare and stuff. I'm a dev. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, Serenity, if you can like let people know in voice chat, just be like, hey, you know, we're about to showcase it again. I already made an announcement again, but you know, got to make like 17 announcements. And Moby, if you can go outside with one of those big arrows and stuff, like go outside and just like start waving them around. This way to watching Fractured Veil. That'd be, that'd be cool too. The funny thing is in beta they have, oops, I'm going to put this away too. Got tested between like that and like release. Okay. Um, so I have this ready and I will need more food later on. All right, chat, I'm switching to Fractured Veil. Vale. Let's get the game up and running. Woo! I think there is a... How me pick an awesome title for the stream? Okay, let's go. Um, Let's do this. This, get rid of Joinable World. Fractured. I think there's a category on Switch for it. Fractured Veil. Vale. I think there is. Yes, there is. Fractured Veil. Vale. Fractured Veil. Vale. Um... Hmm. Mutant Halloween like a pork. <laughs> Fractured Veil. Behind the scenes? Or, um, uh... With devs. There. 
Simon, you're beautiful. All right, chat, if you're here for Don't Starve Together, I'm going to be leaving Don't Starve Together, but I'm still streaming. I am just switching over to a different game called Fractured Veil. Vale. We're going to be with a developer that, along the way, talking with us, explaining the game. I'm going to go ahead and mute my music. Um, and I'm going to just place this overlay. Fractured Veil. Vale. Get rid of DST in there. Get rid of this. Sneak peek. Ooh, I like that better. Sneak peek. Thank you, Serenity. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You had DCS topic, but not play night reports. Oh my God, that, that person. I just got to open up my game so I can get it ready to go. I'm so excited to try this game out. Angry Gabe, thank you for the follow. Chat, if you're here for Don't Stop Together, I will be streaming more DSD later on today, but we are showcasing a brand new game that is coming out very soon. Um, if you guys want to hang out with us on Discord, uh, you can do so there. If you guys want to follow me on YouTube, YouTube, you can do so there. I stream every day, twice a day. I was only streaming DSD for maybe about an hour or so. I just wanted to jump in and get the base started and then switch over to this game. Um, so here we go, getting ready with Fractured Veil. Vale. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I am going to add the game and I think I'm gonna remove, I'm gonna do an overlay thing. That way you can see more of it. Just give me a second. Fractured window. Ooh, spicy. Gotta make sure that we turn this up. I gotta make sure that I find a, a, good, a good area this for this. We're working hard to make the best survival MMO experience. That's pretty cool. It's going to be like a survival MMO. To me, it looks like a survival game in general, but I guess MMO is, you know, because it's going to have 500 players in the server. I hope it's updated already. And we appreciate all your help and support, suggestions, bug reports, special thanks to all of our beta testers who made this happen. Awesome. All right, we're in the game. Let's pull in Brandon here. Um, and I'm going to change myself from push to talk to active. Oops. Actively talking. Give me one second. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I'm going to turn you up just like a little bit. There we go. All right, all good. How's it going? Oh, it's going really well. How about yourself? Good, good. So, um, how many, like, I see like the version like on the bottom left corner of the screen. Um, how many different versions have there been of the game? Like how many different releases? Like have you guys done like a lot of beta testing and stuff? Um, so for the last two years, the game has been in closed uh, access. So a few testers are brought in every week and uh, new builds are pushed out sometimes maybe three or four times a week. Hmm. Okay, cool. So it has gone through quite a bit of uh, internal testing as well. Awesome. Yeah, I kind of watched like a little bit of because there there was some stuff on YouTube about like showcasing the game a little bit, so I can kind of get to know it a little bit. So it's gonna be I was just talking about like before I got in in here, it was a, is a five hundred player massive like massive server is it gonna be like one big server or multiple different servers or kind of like East Coast so Central kind of thing. Yeah, so it'll be um, five hundred per server, multiple servers um, that'll be kind of like different fractures. So. Um, the way that the servers are going to be distributed is um, the plan is to have each server kind of have like a specific thing kind of related specifically to that um, server. So different biomes, different features, um, different dungeons, stuff like that. Ooh, you got me at the dungeons, by the way. <laughs> so when I was, so every time I play like a game, even like Don't Start Together, like one of my bigger games that I, that I play, I'm always like, man, you, you got to have dungeons in here. Like something that... Because the, the, a lot of a lot of games, like when we play games, like, you know, whatever we play, like other survival games or whatever, it's always good. Like for me, I like dungeons because you have that aspect of like going in and like losing and having to do it again and again and again. Are you guys, is are you guys having kind of like special rewards upon completing the dungeons, like special items and stuff that you get or that you can only get in dungeons? Like, so is that kind of what it is? So those are the type of the future plans that we're having. Plus we're also looking into having it to where it's not just um, server-based dungeons, but also instance. So Ooh. there will be the ability to, for you to kind of go in. You will be interacting with other players, but then there'll be instance ones where it's just your group. As for the type of stuff that you'd want to find in a dungeons, we're definitely looking into implementing stuff that's kind of dungeon-specific. 
um, we kind of want the whole experience to be similar to like Diablo, where it's like you constantly want to run these dungeons over and over to get yeah. really good loot. Yeah, yeah, I like oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> okay, that's really cool. Um, because that's what I was thinking. Like that's, I mean, stuff like that. I find, I always find like with games, like when they implement stuff like that, it makes you not feel not that you'd ever get bored. You know what I mean? But it just kind of brings back like consistent you know challenges like built into the game that you're always like trying to like compete with it and like get better get better loot and like yeah it reminds me of diablo a lot for sure all right so let's go through the settings i guess um did you want to walk me through like the character customization and stuff oh well i was thinking uh for the character customizer i was thinking you just kind of go with the flow kind of experience it as like kind of like a new player okay kind of go for the stuff that you'd like to see all right cool cool uh language english that's all good Full screen. I was just gonna think. Okay, so uh, for getting, does your game support like full 144 hertz plus kind of thing automatically, or does it have to have VSync enabled in order for that? That is a good question. I'm not entirely sure. That is something you can definitely test for us, though. Okay, I think I should be able to see like right away when I get in. It should be okay. Do you guys have a tab like a a button like a tilde button to enable FPS like display in game at all? Uh yeah, so if when you're going in as well, it should just be all deaf. Okay, I'll do that then. Um, boom effect, post processing, blah 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 blah. I'll leave all this stuff enabled. Of course, windowed full screen, so I can tab out easily. Nice, I like that. Audio, of course, leave that normal. Controls, leave that all the same, and then UI. Is the UI going to change? Like, what are you guys going to be doing for the UI? Because it's right now it's just so... kind of empty. Yeah, so for the UI, um, you're kind of seeing it um, almost complete. We did a huge UI overhaul last month, um, and there's still a few things that need to kind of drip in. Um, so there will be an assortment of UI options that you'll be able to change once those get implemented. Okay. One thing that, like, I mean, I don't know if you, I'm sure you guys are looking into this anyways, is a um, some games have, like, what they call, like, a streamer spot, basically, for the camera. So like mm -hmm. that is always an like a kind of an interesting thing to have where you can have it enabled or disabled. So that way, it, like it'll say like UI, and then you you know how my camera is like on the bottom left corner sort of thing. It'll kind of tell you where to put your camera, so that way you're not blocking any of like the in-game. Um, oh, display. that's a yeah, that is definitely a really good idea. Yeah, uh, it's something that I've seen in a few games, and it really changes like the way that like for the streamer side of things, you're like, oh, this is awesome because like you know that no matter what, the entire time that you're playing the game, it'll never overlap like on anything. Okay. Uh, so I'm just, so I guess I'll just go select character. Ooh. Okay. Um, here we go. Looks just like me. <laughs> I like the little fanny pack. <laughs> it's nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go ahead. Scan. It's kind of like, kind of like, I guess, you know, kind of seven days ish where you kind of like can customize multiple different things. More You'll notice as you're going in there as well, there's uh, quite a few um, very specific options. We actually had a lot more, but um, we actually had like some role-playing communities come in and saying that there was too many options available, so we kind of dialed those back. Oh, yeah. Make the eyes color nice. Definitely looking in, into feedback from everyone specifically just to see what kind of options that might be missing that they might like. Okay. I always like to have like a good amount of customization when it comes to stuff like this, like anything limited and like, yeah, I, I kind of agree. If you get too crazy with it, it can get a little bit, get a little bit hectic, but I think it's nice to have. Yeah. Cause I know for people like me, if like when it comes to the character customizer, we can probably spend between 30 and 40 minutes, just fine tuning our characters to look oh, exactly sure. how we want. And also, like, if you're playing an MMO, people want their characters to look like very specific, right? Like, they wanted to, they want to spend that half an hour making their characters look, you know, the way they do. Yep, definitely. Ooh, I like these hair types. That's, yeah, that's the thing we're trying to promote as well as like as much individual individuality as we can. Mm -hmm. um, basically, anytime there's anything that someone really wants to have implemented, we're really community driven in the sense that a lot of the stuff that's already been implemented has been suggested within our own discord yeah so it's something that we're always taking a look at so even throughout the stream today we'll all be getting you to link the discord just to have people kind of funnel in if they have any suggestions um that'll be definitely the best place to share them okay how do i get like brown or whatever hair <laughs> is it just like rgb 
I'm just looking to see like where the brown's at. Is it where that looks kind of like brownish, I guess. Okay. Oh, all right. Um. Oh, you can shoot. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. Wait, there's different. Oh my god, that's awesome. Purple hair, me, 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 me. You want to make my hair purple, Serenity? <laughs> I can do that. That's I usually the most popular one chosen yeah. as well. Do, do, do. Okay, hair type. All right, let's make it purple. And for those wondering, because uh, we kind of like just dove into the conversation real quick, um, I am Brandon. I am a community manager and also lead QA, a part of the project. And basically what we'll be doing today is kind of just going through the normal game loop, just kind of experiencing it as like a fresh player. And then answering any questions that you guys definitely have. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions in chat, just shoot them up and then I'll try to read chat and also focus and concentrate. You know me, like I'm I'm okay at like multitasking, but <laughs> I'll do my best. I'll do my best. All right, what name are we going to choose? Let's choose hmm. Chat, choose some names out of here. What should we name? I guess we can just do all fun. No, 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 no. We need like a Hawaiian name. <laughs> okay, let's go with Jenny, are you already in the game as well too? I don't know if you actually booted your game up. Um, here, Let's name yourself Brandon. There we go. Character name is already taken. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's me. Oh, because we're connecting to the server with like 500 people. Well, that would make sense. All right, I'll just do all funny games. You're waiting to join in. All right, there we go. Okay, I'm ready to go. So when you connect, like, in, so when you go to get into a game, say I'm in like. So I know you said you're going to make the, the server specific and they're going to have special events on it. Say like one server has like one crazy event that's like really, really cool. And I'm like, I really want to switch to that server. Are you going to make it where uh, characters can switch servers or no? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. Players will be able to travel in between servers um, once that's implemented. So we don't want to limit anyone in in that way. What happens if like I'm in Canada and your server is like, in like Germany or something, I have a really bad ping. Are you guys gonna have multiple servers in different areas or is it gonna be all like US central like uh, base servers? So we're, we are gonna start with North America mm -hmm. um, and then kind of branch out from there as things progress. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. Cause like, I feel like, I feel like generally like US East, US Central, US West is like, even if you're some far, like even if you're, I, I think even when I used to play on like a lot of servers, I mean, as long as you have less than a hundred ping or less, you're kind of okay. You're not gonna have too much lag. So, um, and I see, I'm assuming we just do join and these are our stats, kills, time played, humans eaten. Wait, wait, humans eaten. <laughs> what? Um, okay. Uh, so do I just click join game and then it automatically connects me into a server? Yep. Okay. Let's do it. Hey, snap for showcasing fractured veil right now. So if you, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like seven days to die, but and whole different things mmo style so like a ton of people um we're just getting into it right now we'll be showcasing literally um probably a good majority of the um, mechanics that we have in place so far and you'll see the inspiration that we have from other games as well as seven days to die awesome i like that like i like when i think it's always cool when you see games that kind of like take bits and pieces and put their own like spin on it to make it even better Ooh, okay let's get in here Okay, so, oh no. <laughs> so it, it, as soon as you connect in there, these are like, I'm assuming like pods that we get in. So yeah. they're not interactable with right now, but um, that's essentially what their function will be. Okay. Um, we're also implementing something so they're revival pods. Um, so the room that you just spawned in, um, this whole area is called the Thorcon. So it's essentially a power plant. Okay. Let me try something real quick. Um, your body's vulnerable while logged out. Log out somewhere safe. Oh, that's kind of cool. 
so no matter if you log out of the game you kind of have to log in like a, inside of a town hey close how's, how's it going um let me enable vsync real quick i might also let's see if it changes anything so it doesn't okay so control it was a uh, alt f you said for fps uh yeah okay alt f sorry or alt f1 yeah it should be alt f uh yep i see it on the right right beside your mini oh sorry i see it there okay um uh, just want to make sure that i'm trying to get like the full so let's get a cinematic and go epic and then turn off vsync okay so maybe it's just because i'm inside this ship that it's not like i mean it is loading a lot of stuff so it's possible that's why it's like that but that's okay i'll leave that up on later later on so if you press alt i see that you kind of get like a third you know kind of like here just yeah like kind of like a swivel kind of like free look going nice. on i like that i like that okay um Wait, is also, this, if you press it is quiet the, for me. Yep. Oh, and it, it kind of it kind of keeps you in third person specifically. I like that. Yeah, if you press uh, B, you'll actually go into third person. Okay, so then when we're in here, is that you in front of us? Yep, that's okay, me. Okay, nice. Oh, I guess this is where we go out. Okay. Uh, left or right? Uh, either one. Each one will lead you to kind of the main room, and I'm gonna give you like a little tour. Okay. We didn't have these Whoa. arrows in actually originally, and people were getting like uh, lost. I think at one point, someone during like one of the play tests spent like forty-five minutes trying to get <laughs> out, and didn't let us know until like kind of last minute. <laughs> the graphics are like really, really eye-pleasing. I like the colors and stuff. Press O to, anytime to equip, or you're thirsty. Fry. Wait, press O to O or E. I didn't read that. It came up oh, that was O. Place. Yep. So O to. What does it do? Equip like a frying pan? Yep. So that's kind of like the starter weapon. Because we didn't want you just punching trees or like punching rocks. We kind of wanted you to have something that doesn't have any durability loss that you can kind of just get up and running really quickly. Oh, I think it's zero. Is it zero? Yeah, it's zero. Okay. Yep, so zero, so yep. one, through, one through zero is your weapon. Okay. That makes sense. It has like little feathers on it. I like that. Okay, and here you also have primary attack and then uh, alternate attack, which is more of like a strong attack, I'm guessing. Yep, so I'm going to get you into a party. That way it just allows us to keep track of each other quicker. Um, okay. So if you want to open up the menu a tab and go to the party menu. Yep. You should see one, you should see an invitation from me. Perfect, I got it, yeah. I think we'll also get your friend in here as well. So one thing I was mentioning before we started, do you guys have an in-game soundtrack yet? Uh, we do not okay. currently. A lot of the plans with the Kickstarter are kind to get in that like initial push of a lot of that custom content. Yeah. As well as getting uh, more engineers working on the project because it is quite a small team. Yeah. It's nice though. You guys have, I think, I don't know. I haven't checked anything today, but like last I checked, you guys were almost over 50% of your goal too, which is nice. Yep. Is this PVP or PVE? Um, I'm assuming it depends on the server, if you're doing a PVE server or PVP server, I'm, I would guess. The well, with the, way, with the way we're implementing it and the way it is now, currently it's both. Um, as you notice in the top right underneath the compass, it'll say zone one PVE. Under the compass, uh, I see, sorry, where does it say that? So the top of the screen in the middle, you'll see. Oh zone yeah, 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 PVE. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. How's it going, quirky? Um. Okay. So do we just should I just explore everywhere? So follow me. We'll kind of just go through the initial thing. I'll introduce you to kind of like the initial like game loop. Okay. Um. Just starting out, kind of like a little bit of the progression, and then we'll move on to stuff like base building and uh, mutant sieges. So I see, like on the bottom middle, it's uh. It's fish for food, a uh, little water symbol for water, and then there's like something else for something. And temperature. I'm temperature, okay. And then lightning, like I'm assuming some sort of radiation poisoning 
and then so waves. yeah so the lightning is shock the uh, radiation symbol is for poison um, there are mutants in the game that do poison you mm -hmm. um, the last one is wetness so you'll notice once you go into the uh, oh, water okay. that one will go right up f to fill f to drink water Just press f to fill or hold f what does fill do fill your water bottle yes say you have a canteen or a coconut canteen equipped okay that'll get you up and running uh is shift do some faster if you hold shift or is it not uh you should yeah but oh, there's deer underwater nice nice <laughs> they've adapted yeah they definitely adapted um is there like fishing in the game at all oh i guess we probably shouldn't get into that early right you can ask those questions later on drink all the water <laughs> yeah so what is this like well, while we're or... while we're here we should definitely drink water because okay uh it's not as bad as other survival games but you don't want to be caught without it okay so i also noticed that okay i like how you have to hold f in order to drink water that's nice instead of just like accidentally tabbing it and like walking up to it and pressing it real quick um mm -hmm. i so one thing one thing was um when you're running you you get winded or do you have like is there a stamina bar to indicate like when your stamina is running low or so if you notice close to the middle of your screen you'll notice like these two bars one to the left and one to the right mm -hmm. um it's kind of like contextual where the the clearer it is the actually more in danger you are of like losing like full stamina and full health so the left one is health and the right one is stamina okay Ooh, i like that it's very like it's very like not in your face but it kind of still mm -hmm. you know what i mean Okay, so is there yep. a, so here's a question so that's what i'm talking about I, I guess that's what you're talking about with the ui you're going to eventually change it to can people make that more um like opaque rather than like kind of leave it in, or, or like is that going to always be like that or can you can so, position where it's at so we're looking into more options on what to expose to the player we do want to keep things minimal but um as i was saying is like the more feedback we get from players that'll kind of drive what our decisions are yeah. as for a certain degree, we're gonna keep things um, kind of like on how we want it, but yeah, um, there there is definitely room for improvement, especially when it comes to quality of life stuff. Yeah, I mean that's like a that's like a not even a big thing. Okay, so I'm before we zoom zoom away, I I'm noticing that this is somebody else's structure and it says permission denied. I mean I'm guessing this is somebody's structure. Then if they are not in our party and I go to destroy it, nothing will happen because it's a PVE server. Uh, correct. Yep. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really cool. So like, you can't actually destroy it if you didn't even want to. Mm -hmm. Yep. So nice. that's actually a new thing that we had in because uh, there's a lot of people who kind of want to just be focused on PVE. Mm -hmm. And we know it's kind of like the division of survival games where some people just want to PVP and some people just want to PVE. Um, so there aren't specific PVE or PVP servers. We do have specific zones. And we're not going to be limiting the gameplay experience to just one thing. We're going to kind of allow players to kind of experience the game in the way they want to. So if you're PvE only, you'll be able to experience the game fully through PvE, the same way through PvP. But we are going to do things to incentivize PvE players to kind of get out of their comfort zone and kind of decide to PvP if, if there's like a type of reward that they might want to get. Right, right, right. Okay. Yeah, because I think like that, having the option there is really nice. Then that way, if they want to get onto like a PvP zone and they want to say, "Okay, I don't care if this gets destroyed or something like that," it's nice to have that option. You know, um, I should, probably should change my controls to like crouch with control. Is control anything right now? I don't think it is anything. I'm gonna change that real fast. It yeah. shouldn't be. Yeah. Okay. Oh, still didn't change. Did I not do that right? Oh, I think left actually control. left control won't won't allow you to bind it right now. I think I reported that bug earlier today. Okay. Um, so that'll be looked into. <laughs> Saint Gaming, how's it going? We're we're showcasing Fractured Veil, vale, a new survival game coming up. How's it going? You Ooh, probably noticed as well when you've crouched, um, your stamina regens a okay. lot faster than it does just normally. So I just killed the deer. Can you hack at it with the frying pan? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. You can, but it, it is not as efficient as the other tools. Uh, tools. Um, if you want to actually just go quickly into the crafting menu, so, um, you'll kind of be able to see what the progression is a bit. It's crafting and tab, I'm guessing? Yes, it is. Okay, so basically tab is like your big, your big like 
everything that you need kind of thing. Okay. Yep. So you'll notice there's a quick craft in your inventory, but there's also a very specific um, screen for the crafting. So that'll give you a full list of everything you can craft that's specific to your inventory. Okay. Um, so the, th okay, sorry. Okay, so this shows everything specific to your inventory. So it shows you have like the zero out of, okay. So cloth and I'm assuming cloth's how you make. Your backpack. Yeah. And there's a Q time on that. Okay. Um, where does it show? Oh, it just says iron. Okay, it's a little bit hard to see like the crafting requirement tools. Mm -hmm. Um, but I okay. So he picks pick on. Okay, that's nice. Okay. So I need twine and that, and then is there like a different utility other than what I just used? Machete. I need iron. Um. And then a hand axe. I need iron as well too. So those um, are the the ones you're looking at are kind of the higher tier. If mm -hmm. if you look at the bottom, you'll see the stone pickaxe and stone hand axe. Okay. So we can kind of start with there. Um, there should be some stone nodes up here. I like how that you. You do start yourself out with a frying pan. I mean, out of anything else, like it's better than just like like you said, punching just a rock for no reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And there will be eventually uh, dinosaurs. We're working. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Damn. <sighs> maybe one day. Maybe one day. Ride a raptor into town. Um, okay, I can't so... confirm nor deny <laughs> the existence of dinosaurs. Yeah, we definitely thought it would be a lot better to kind of have this than just, um, like I said, just punching or just using a rock against something. It didn't really seem the same to us. Yeah. So when you use a different alternate tool, right now I'm using a frying pan. Does the frying pan have zero durability? Is it always going to be So available? it's got unlimited durability, right. so you'll never be able to break it. Right. What happens if you start the game and you lose your frying pan? It, it's impossible. You, you can't. You can't unequip it, and you can't. You can't toss it away with the frying pan. Yep. Oh, so it's always in zero. Oh, I yep. like that. Always dedicated nice. To zero good, good choice yep. with that because, yeah, that's really good. Okay, I like that. Do so you always have it? And all right, that's good. That is actually really interesting. Okay. And sorry, yeah, when you use alternate tools, like say a, oh, sorry, I need to go after a smaller tree. Um, so if you use another tool, like another ax, I'm guessing we're going to be getting a lot more utility out of it, or sorry, a lot more resources out of it, right? So the, right now, the way it's implemented is you actually harvest it faster. Oh, okay. You probably also noticed the flower appear while you're um, harvesting the tree. Uh, so is it, okay, the flower, are you talking about the little red flower that is, because I, I, I was, when you first launched the game, I noticed the little red flower mm -hmm. that shows up. Is that what I'm, trying, I'm supposed to see? Um, so stop hitting the tree and kind of do like a 360 around it. Oh, okay. Yeah. This little flower. Yep. So it's kind of similar to what, like a mini game type thing where if you hit that consecutively, it harvests the tree faster. Oh, um, I'm trying to remember what, yeah, I'm trying to remember what game had like a, kind of a similar thing. Okay. That's cool. I like that. So kind of, uh, that is really cool. It's like rust. That's what it was. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I was, another thing I was curious about, is there any XP in this game? Like, is there, is XP implemented in the game at all? I don't, I don't know if I've seen like an XP bar. So it's not implemented right now. The uh, player characteristics and stat system is being implemented. Mm -hmm. It's still being worked on, but that's something we'll definitely be including. Cool. Half one of those. Oh, so it shows up in green and an indication of how many you can actually make if you want to make it. Okay, yep. that's really nice. And then the torch, I'll craft one of those too. I probably should start crafting a bunch of stuff. Um, 
And I can switch my inventory out if I want to. Okay, uh, would I be go. able to get one of your mods uh, posting the Kickstarter? Because it does yeah. have a lot of condensed information on there. That for sure, will for sure. Kind of fill things in while we're just going through the game and kind of answering questions. Um, yeah, actually, Serenity, if you can do me a favor. Um, actually, Brandon, I was looking for the. I just got to get the link for it. If I don't want to have to tab out. I, let me see, actually, if I have the link. They get it from the shared group there. Kickstarter. Copy link. Um. Okay, let me do something real quick. Yep. Okay. There we go. I just made a new channel called the Fractured Veil vale Discord. I was thinking while we're here, I'll kind of get like a little uh, just base going. Uh, just to kind of give you like a little uh, area for us to kind of work out of. Okay. Just want to find a nice spot. I'm very, very specific on what kind <laughs> of spots I want to want to build a base. So, are you gonna have areas in the map where, say, we're living or say we're near like the swamp or something like that or whatever, the certain certain different you know things might attack us, or is it? Depend I mean, guys, we haven't really attacked anything yet, but um, is it dependent on like where you are in the area, like in the world? So when it comes, are you, do you are you referring to kind of like the mutant sieges and whether or not you'll get raided by mutants? Yeah, like say if I'm kind of closer to, uh, like what if I, for example, we passed that one base that was at the very beginning. Say if I base there, mm -hmm. And then versus basing out in the wilderness, like somewhere like super far north, does the weather change and like offer different variants of like mutants and stuff? So when it comes to north, the uh, mutants are actually stronger. So there will be different areas where the mutants are a lot stronger or buffed than they okay. would be closer to the like uh, smaller zones. Awesome. That's really cool. That's why I like. Um, so that I also noticed on the bottom right corner when I use this utility. Uh, is it going down? I think it is. Okay, so the durability shows and that's a little white bar. Now, are you offering for you like tools and stuff to be repaired or do they, do they just get destroyed and then that's that? So right now, uh, most of the tools and most of the items can be repaired within the inventory when you click on them. Um, there is a plan for the repair bench to be fully implemented. We Like we have the bench and the UI is just not in for it yet. So if you go to a higher quality tool, it'll allow you to uh, recycle it that way instead of just using a repair bench. How do I, um, how do I, oh, you double click to, okay, so you can double click to put in, how do I repair my ax? Crafting? Um, so right now you can't repair. We, we, uh, we have a repair bench in, but the UI for it's being implemented. Oh, sorry. I like completely like, yeah, <laughs> I was so focused in on what I was doing. I was like, yeah, no my mind just like shut off for a second. That's, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so right now the kind of workaround to doing it is depending on the item, you just recycle it. It gives you back the full amount of resources that will be changed once, uh, the repair bench is fully implemented. Okay. Yeah, I see. You. Once that is in, you'll have to use a currency called Rye to uh, repair it. So with water, um, is there? I guess I'm asking questions that we're probably gonna find out very soon. But say I'm not close to a body of water, is there alternate mm -hmm. ways of getting water, like food and stuff like that, as well too? So there are certain food items that you can. Uh, that you can find whether you're harvesting tree and you find a coconut or bananas or you're scavenging the houses um, that we have throughout the land that actually have soda canned food um, i think there's even an energy drink chocolate bar stuff like that so there are items without within the world that you can get okay. to kind of alleviate that but also you're able to build a structure called the water catcher oh and that's what i was gonna i was gonna say something similar to that with like bamboo or something or maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's something different, but <laughs> anyways, yeah. Okay, that's that's cool. 
So, because I was so, curious, because when I was when I was hacking at the tree, I was like, I wonder if like something will will drop from these. Like if, but they can't, so they can drop coconuts and all that. That's nice. Yeah, we're talking to the dev uh, developer right now, Fruta, um, while we play the game as well at the same time too. He better help build a shelter. <laughs> yeah. So when I'm looking under crafting, um, I see arrows, bandages, etc., etc., etc. How do mm -hmm. I make a? How do I? Is this? What is this? Is that a banana? Oh, it is a banana. So. Okay, it show, shows up a bolt of leather. Okay. One banana, and it shows stack of ten quantity. Does it show how much it will feed me if I eat it? It doesn't yet. Um, we are implementing kind of like tool tips or like um, stuff that'll be in your inventory. I think I can write that down as a suggestion to kind of have the certain amount that it does feed you. Okay. That way you can kind of keep track of both like uh, the food and water values depending on the item. Okay, and then are you gonna make it so certain items kind of decrease your wet, or your wetness, your um, thirst? Your thirst. Not yet. So I think the only item that we have right now that does it is our sham, which is uh like Hawaii, it's a Hawaiian style uh, spam. Okay. That you can loot throughout the world, and I th I believe that's the only one that does it right now. Um, the food system and stuff like that is um, something kind of like future plans where we kind of want to do a little bit more than what we already have with it right now. Okay. Um, so this is the water catcher. That's really cool. It's kind of similar. It kind of reminds me of like the water catcher, catcher from Raft in a way, but that's really nice. I like that. Um, okay. So how do I make, how do I make a structure? Like what you're making? Like where's the crafting for that? Do I have to make a crafting construction tool? Yep. Okay. I'll wait for that. You'll also then. notice in the quick craft, you'll also have like uh, the filter icon. So it'll be like weapons, tools, resources, clothing, medicine, consumables, ammo. Um, I don't know so what I did. The tools one. Oops, sorry. I don't know what I did, but how do I, I, I had like a little active pointer on there. Is that like a checkpoint or something? Oh, oh cool. So it's kind of like a pinging system. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you'll get like a list that comes up. Oh, nice. Okay, I was wondering how I was doing that. And do they eventually disappear? Okay, they do. That's nice. Yep. Okay, so I have my crafting tools. So I have that in my third inventory spot. And then, sorry. Right click, foundations, batch foundation. Walls, batch wall. Ooh, I like this. So I'm glad that you'll be helping with this because usually everything I make kind of ends up like a box. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm so, I'm hoping we come up with something a little bit more intricate. A little bit of thatch and just a door, and we're all set. Hey, Smacky, how's it going? Um, and then how do we make the roofs? So that one will be in three, one. So like it'll be in the floors and stairs section. Oh, and you also offer Smacky. Thank you so much for the follow. You also offer where you can press. Oh, I like that a lot. So when you are going through your foundation list, you can press one, two, three, four, five, and like quick, quick draw, like quick select. I like that's really nice. Yep. That's really awesome. Good job, good job on that. Because that's that's actually something that. Uh, annoys me is when you have like a a list like this and there's not an option for a quick select because some pe sometimes mm -hmm. you just get so used to it it's just like you just want to have a quick key for it I like that a lot um, yeah okay so sorry it was I came from games like Ark and stuff like that where everything was kind of everything is built in the, in your inventory or like within a smithy and you kind of like place it you get mm -hmm. encumbered it's very inefficient so like when I was first dealing with this system, I was actually pretty slow, but now just because of the uh, kind of like the numbers, but also like the location of stuff, I can build something really quick. Yeah, it's really nice. In comparison to what I could do before. Okay, sorry, you said it was uh, three and then roof, thatch floor. Yep. That goes so on, we that goes are on. implementing uh, roofs, like actual roofs, slanted roofs, stuff like that. Um, okay. That will be coming uh, soon. For now, we just use the floors. 
Hey, Soul. Hey, yeah, we're showcasing a new game. I don't know if I have enough wood for this. I don't have enough wood for this. I am going to put down a totem. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to just come here real quick, because we do need to add you guys to the totem. I think I might have to add you. Question, does a totem make it so you respawn here, or is that a bed? So that'll be a bed and a uh, sleeping bag. Ooh. You don't have permissions to build here. So, okay, so you have a group, you have a party, you make a totem, and then the totem makes it so inventory. That the owner can set the um, permissions. So if you should be able to, I think you can access it. So for, yep. what is stopping, say we have a party of 10 players, right? And then we build this mm -hmm. huge contraption and one person in that party puts down a totem and doesn't allow any other people there. So usually what it would be is like before you start building, you have the totem, okay. otherwise it's not protected. You'll also notice like uh, if you come out here real quick, um, let me show you. You'll notice that there's an icon underneath the health that shows that there, it's not connected to a totem. Oh yeah, okay. So like you you want to make sure that when you are in a party and you are uh, doing stuff within the totem that you kind of establish early on who has access to what. I like that. Uh, we'll be taking feedback and looking into more things that we can kind of put in just to prevent stuff like that from happening. I'm guessing a totem is similar to a, um, um, what's that called? Like, what am I thinking of? <laughs> it's a, like a claim block. That kind of what mm -hmm. we're, we're, yeah, awesome. All right. Um, kind of like I a claim block or like in Rust where it's like a tool cupboard. Yeah. Okay, so it offers not only permission, but you can also store stuff inside there as well too. Um, yep. And e what you store, you're able to store resources that you can use to build a base. Yeah. So you just ran into the issue where we're crafting, um, I mean, we're building, and you're like, oh, well, I have no resources to build this wall. Um, you can pile the resources into the totem and then build, and it'll pull the resources from the totem instead of having to be on your inventory. What? <laughs> so, so what? That is actually a really. I like that a lot. That's really nice. So you don't even have to hold like fifteen thousand or fifteen hundred wood. Um, you just put that in there, and then you walk around the area in order to build with your. And it doesn't pull from your inventory; it just pulls from here. How, does it automatically yep. choose to pull from? Wow, that is actually very cool. That's actually yep, so that's it, awesome. That, I like that a lot because what's the vicinity? Like, how far does that go? So as long um, so if you come here to the doorway and show um, pull up your um, construction tool, you'll notice that there's like a kind of like claim line that goes around the totem. Okay. Uh, sorry. So as long as it's within that range, you should be good. Oh no way! I didn't even know what that is. Wow! And then so outside of that, it'll use my inventory within that. That is very. Oh wow! That's really nice. It's you. I've never seen that in a game before. <laughs> I mean, not that I know of, anyways. That is. I I really do know cool. that some mods have introduced it for some games, but I think we're the first to really put that in, as as far as I'm aware, at least like from what I've played. Hmm. Awesome. Um, all right, sorry, I didn't make a torch. How did, you, how did we make a torch? Crafting, that really matters because there's already a lot of torches anyways. Um, I would have needed some more wood. Oh, so you can just craft a torch with just wood. Okay, I'll get more later on. Yep. So at nighttime, Fernando, thank you for the follow. So at nighttime, um, do we offer like the chance of having more mutants come and attack us, or I guess I guess how does like what is the scale of mutants depending on like how early we are in the game? Like say we're, we just started out, we're just building. Are we gonna receive mutants attacking us like day one or something like that? Or so with the way it currently works right now. Um... With the size of our base being the way it is, we're not going to get into a mutant siege. Uh, our base isn't really a threat or big enough for it to cause mutants to actually be attracted to it. Okay. 
Um, once you build up enough, and uh, depending on the size of your base, it'll attract mutants, but also like the difficulty will increase um, based on the tier and size. Okay, so base. so I guess it, it depends on how far along you are um, leveling inside, like kind of like getting further inside the game, you know, what tier you are and stuff. Okay, that's nice. That, it kind of scales like uh, along your scaling as well too. That's really cool. Here we Discord community leader. Oh, nice. Nice. Nice to meet you. Yeah, so Fernando is a community leader within our Discord, so he'll definitely be able to help out and answer any questions that we might miss. Awesome. Because I, I, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm building, I'm kind of like, it's kind of like tunnel vision. Yeah, I, I usually He's am focused. pretty good. I usually am pretty good at responding to questions like while I'm like doing any type of game, doesn't really matter. But now that I'm trying to concentrate on like, you know, what you're saying and then what's going on in chat and then also what's going on in the game, it's, I'm definitely going to miss a few questions here and there. So it's nice. Feel free to enjoy the gameplay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, it's really bothering me. We're missing one torch here. We got to do We got to put a little torch in the wall. Okay. So place it using, nope, that's not how you place it. Right click. So it's in your uh, crafting thing because it's considered like a construction thing. So if you go to, it should be the fifth category and eight. So I have a torch in my hand. How do I place it on the wall? You need to the, equip your construction tool. So it, it's considered a construction object. Oh, okay. Uh, and then miscellaneous torch. Oh, yep. okay. All right. That makes sense. So then, and then you have to highlight it, and then uh, either interact. interact. Okay, okay, it. cool, yep. cool, cool, cool. So you can't take a, you can't take a regular torch. That makes sense. And like, yeah, all right, perfect. And they can hold this on your hand. Now, can you use a torch to attack with as well too? Uh, yes, you can. But Oops, sorry. because this is a PVE zone, you can't do damage to me. Can you burn down? That's another thing I was going to ask too. Is there fire spread within the base at all, or no? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, with the amount of calculations that that cost for the server, uh, it's just not something that yeah, we that would honestly probably right lag now. quite a bit as well too. If somebody just decided to like torch a bunch of stuff, yeah, I mean especially since thatch is like kind of like the base resource that you're kind of starting out with. Like, if it was a PvP zone, good luck. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, so now that we've reached kind of like the basic of building. Let's, do we move into probably like making some sort of? Do we have to use a? Do we have to make a campfire next? Yep. Okay. So I have to get some stones. So I made a I made a regular axe. Hand axe. Was there like a hand pickaxe? So I need iron for that. Oh, there it is. A stone pickaxe. Okay. So I need more stone. Um. At nighttime, I noticed like the. Does it get like darker than this, or is this basically how dark it does get? I think it's based on cloud coverage. It, I think it can get darker than this. Okay. Um, and then I see that if you, I just wanted to test real quick. I see that if you use a stone axe on a rock, it's not a good idea because it's going to degrade very, very fast. Is that, mm -hmm. is that right? Okay. It'll good. also tell you. It'll also tell you that it's not the tool to use. Awesome. Now, does only... Oh, no, the rocks have them as well, too. The little flowers. Yep. It also gives you more resources for hitting them on the dots as well, too. It'll increase the amount that you harvest and make harvesting a lot quicker. Is that a ukulele or is that a uh, violin noise for the flower? Uh, ukulele noise. Nice. I like that. Okay, so now I can make the campfire. Wait, did Talzan ask the same question too? <laughs> he did. Okay, so I got the campfire crafting. Cancel my other one. You just click on it to do that. Okay. Campfire so while you guys are doing that, I'm going to quickly run to the river and fill us some canteens. Okay. So it needs wood in order to burn, obviously. What is this? Um, what, what is this thing? So how, when you have your quick tab open for inventory, 
How do you view what the item is? Um, are you just planning on making it so like if you hover over the item, it'll tell you what it is? Kind of thing? In the quick craft? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so uh, that was, um, it is something that's going to be implemented. It was suggested by another streamer. Um, I think it's being worked on right now. Okay. Actually, so that'll definitely be in because I know a lot of people are running into issues where when you've never played the game, it's really hard for you to kind of un know what an item is until yeah. you've played long enough. So that'll definitely be coming in soon. Okay, perfect. Okay, so that's cool. So we got a little campfire in there. I'm assuming the campfire offers like for cooking um, different types of food and whatnot. So if I were to die and if I were to die right now and like die consistently, would there be any penalties for me dying like every five seconds? So say like instead of worrying about my hunger, I just I just said to myself, well, I'm just gonna go die. And then I revive, or I I revive on the totem, and then keep rinse and repeating. Is there any reason to worry about my? Um... I believe there's a partial, uh, there's a partial penalty to your health. I know that we had one implemented, but we took it out during testing. Okay. Um, I think the health thing is still something that occurs, but before we had it actually affect your weight and other stats, but um, with everyone with like some issues coming up during the builds we decided to remove it for now but okay. there definitely will be a either a limit put into how often you can spawn or a penalty for constantly spawning okay weakness is still in apparently somebody was saying um is weakness the thing so usually when so you'll die and then spawn you'll get like a weakness buff okay uh as I mentioned previously, it affected your weight, the amount of weight you can carry, but we've gotten rid of that for now. It's something okay. that we'll be revisiting though. Okay. Like I was thinking possibly it could be something like if it's, if you're a certain, if you're only in a certain, like say like the stone age or you know the beginner side of things and you die, um, you know, once you finally step into like the next tier and then you die, then it might be good to kind of give more of a penalty to kind of give those players that are just starting out like a little bit of like leeway. That mm -hmm. might be something, but it sounds to me like that you're already kind of planning on doing it. So I noticed when I went to make a torch, um, is there ever going to be a quick craft option where say I'm going to place torches and I accidentally only want to place a few and then I want to go back to making torches again. All I have to press is like one button to go back to my quick craft button. So I'm going, so I go immediately back to where, where I was before. Is that an option at all or no? So within the construction tool yeah. you're referring to? Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't know if we have plans for that, but you're actually the second person to suggest that. Okay. Um, so I'll take a look at our suggestions channel to see whether or not that is in there. Um, if it is, I'll definitely upload that one as well because it, it does make things a lot easier. Yeah, um, instead of going back through the list. Now, also, apparently, for torches outside, how do I make one just, like, in the grass? Do I have to have a foundation in order to do that? Like so right now we don't really have like a standing torch. Okay. Um, okay. So I right just, here I dropped the canteen. Sure. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Dropped one for your. Oh. Okay. How did you make the canteen? What was the uh, materials for making that? Is that this in here? Let's see. Canteen was iron. Oh, how'd you make iron already? Um, I already had it. Oh, okay. I didn't start from the character creator. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, that makes sense. But I, I will show you, and I will uh, get us a uh, smelting thing up, so that way you can check it out. Okay. Okay, so we got our, we got our base all set up. Um, is there a other than, other? Th well, I guess I could probably look through the tools there. Let's see. Miscellaneous, large chest, small chest. Okay, there it is. Put a little chest down. And then rotation wise, okay, it looks like R is your rotation button to rotate front to back. Okay, three. There we go. Now, does the chest work the same way too? If you have stuff inside the chest, it'll pull from the chest within the vicinity of. Um, 
of the totem or only what's inside the totem. To for crafting. Uh, currently it does not. Um, I don't know if there's plans to change that in the future, but I do know that there's going to be stuff implemented uh, with that for you to be able to do that within the totem. How do you... Oh. Okay, how do you take only one item? Like, say, uh, so if it's right-click to do half stacks. How is it? How do you only choose one rock? So right now, that's not fully implemented. Okay. Um, if you go to, um, if you go to your normal inventory, you'll notice there's like a quantity slider when you click on an item. Um, so when you're not in the inventory of a totem. Oh, okay. And then when you, oops, I think I just dropped them on the ground. Okay, so you take it and you go quantity. Okay. And then. So that's partially implemented. Right now, it doesn't drop the specific amount that you select, but okay. that'll be in soon because we're at the stage where it's like 90% of the UI implementation uh, is complete. Okay. Um, so there's still a few things like that um, that still need to be implemented fully. Okay. Um, all right. So we made the campfire. Now, when you make when the game gets released or when the game is, do you, are you guys planning on having like more of a tutorial system? Like, okay, it's time to go ahead and get yourself like some shelter situation. Is that planned or not really? Yes. Yeah, so, if you noticed on the right side, there's kind of like the gather stone. Oh kind yeah. Of like there's, there's going to be the introductory um, type quests like that. That just kind of lead the player along a bit without being too. Uh, handholdy, right? But it's something we'll be definitely evaluating while we're playing. Uh, I mean, while we're uh, developing, just to kind of see what works well for the user. Okay, that's why if... <laughs> I wanted to see what it looked like when I hit you again. What is a yeah, uh, I... ray? Is that like a coin or something? So that's the currency. So you can get that from um, either qu completing quests. Um, you can get it from killing mutants. You can get it from loot containers throughout the world, as well as within dungeons. Okay. And that says craft just Okay, so there is actually kind of a mini thing that I didn't really follow along on the right-hand side. I probably should have done that. Yeah. Now it's telling me to craft a, uh, an axe. Okay. And then once I do that, I'm sure it's probably going to tell me to make a little house and then so on and so on. I guess we'll find out what it says here. Oh, it says quest complete. Oh, and then when you complete the quest, you... Oh, okay, okay, okay. So now that I did that, stone pickaxe. Um, I was actually planning on making, but did I just use all my... Oh, I need to get wood now. Okay. I guess I could just... Hold on. Can I craft... So, okay, so you can only craft structures uh, with the totem around. You can't craft items in your inventory. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. With, so, yeah. So there okay. is a crafting bench, which I'm pretty sure the way it's implemented now allows you to um, pull from the totem. Okay. But we don't have a crafting bench right now. Okay. So now I got another. Th so gather 100 fiber. Um, I have fiber though. I wonder if I like drop it on the ground. If I drop it on the ground and then I pick it back up, that kind of is crafting. Oh, yes, it does. Craft twine. Okay. Does it say craft 50? Yes, it does. So I like that, that you can quickly say you already grabbed a bunch and I want to do the the beginning tutorial. I could just grab what you have in your inventory and then it counts towards the, it counts towards like the little um, quest. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's a little, oops. Okay, so craft a homemade bow. So it's basically going through just like the... Yep, like the beginner kind of progression thing, yep. the kind of stuff that you kind of need to get yourself going. So the quick craft, does that tell you what you currently can make right now? Or is that just... Yep, so okay. it's, it's based on what you have in your inventory. Nice. Um, so that way it's kind of not cluttered. It also allows you to kind of filter, sort through certain things. I see that as well that too. That way you don't need to. That's yep. really cool. 
Um, I see where my character says intelligence, 17, endurance, 17, agility, strength, talents, uh, quests, talent tree. Is that under? So those are being worked on okay. as well. Um, so those will be something that you will have to pay attention to. Awesome. So like every character, I guess, it's, like I said, it's an MMO. So every character is going to be somewhat different. Um, that's nice. I like that a lot. I assume it's going to want me to craft some arrows after this. Just kind of expanding our base for when we get to the point where we get to a siege. We should be good for now, though. Okay. Um, I'll let I'll let you go through the kind of like uh, little uh, progression. Awesome. My bow is still being made. If you log out, can you be looted or raided while you log out? Apparently, you can die. Um, I don't know if you can be looted, but I think you can die. From when we went to the intro, it said make sure you log out in a safe spot. Yeah, so with the way it's implemented right now, you can get looted while you're in the safe zone, even though it is PvE. Um, there are going to be changes to that system, though, and I believe we're also looking into making it so that once you log off in like the safe zone in the PvE area, your body disappears. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Atlas, but apparently a lot of issues were arising when the game first released, where uh, characters were logging in and kind of all the sleeping lifeless or unconscious bodies were kind of just sitting there clogging up the resources of that area yeah i do like that you can get looted i think being able to get looted inside of a game is really nice like not from like a you know another player per se but like the enemy is is awesome because the further I, f I find like in some games that we play especially like there comes to a point where you almost kind of have everything right and then you're like oh now i have everything there's nothing to do you know what i mean you're just kind of fed like fending off like every wave that attacks you and then eventually it's like okay well now what do we do right so it's nice that you can actually get looted it's i think that's really cool so let's craft cloth now it says craft two cloth on your quick craft. Is there a way to increase that to like 10 or 20? Or is it just basically just what you can do only craft two at a time? So what you'd have to do is uh, you just have to hit it once or twice, depending on how much you want to do it. But yeah. if you want a very specific, it needs to be done in the crafting menu. Though we could probably add something. So if you right click it, maybe do it by quantity. Yeah, like, I mean, that way I can just be like, okay, I need 10 of these or something like that. Or, like, click, because if you click it once, it's a quick craft, which is under your quick craft. But if you right click, then I can just, I could right click and maybe interact with, like, a, oh, if you right click, you move your quick craft up and down, it looks like. Um, okay, that's really cool. So then, yeah, so if you right click on it, for example, or hold control, then I can do, like, a little slider to see how many I would want. I don't know, something like that would be really interesting. Um, we'll definitely be revisiting uh, kind of those quality of life things to kind sure. of make the experience a lot easier for people. Um, okay, so now I'm at craft a backpack. I can't do because I need I need tw uh, cloth and twine. House so, is looking pretty good. It does look really nice. So when it comes to the uh, the music that you're gonna be that you're gonna be adding into the game, because like I always say, music is you know sets the atmosphere for like a lot of different things. Are you gonna go with kind of like a continuous Minecraft vibe like track that kind of plays in the background that kind of can go like kind of continuously like loops kind of thing, or are you looking for more uh, like have you guys like thought about that at all for like the audio? Um, soundtrack. I'm not entirely sure where we're at on that. Uh, isn't really my department, but I do know that uh, it's something we are looking into, and it's okay. something that is going to probably take hold as kind of like the Kickstarter and development progresses. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I've always, I actually it was weird because when we were just talking about, oh, I got to get Thatch. When we were just talking about it earlier, like the, when I was just doing my other, you know, when I was playing Don't Start Together before I was doing this, um, I was mentioning how like certain games like Minecraft, for example, it's really nice to have that background music that, you know, people mm -hmm. can listen to on stream that just kind of like flows really, really well versus like an in-game soundtrack that doesn't really like mend well um 
then it's just, I don't know, it's just nicer, I find, so. That's cool that you guys are kind of, yeah. like, thinking about it nice in game music. I mean, I like yeah, the atmosphere I, music right now, it's nice. Yeah, because I know people like the ambient noise, but I know that there's sometimes there's stuff in games that are playing in the background, and sometimes you don't even realize they're there mm -hmm. until someone kind of points them out. Um, an example is that is we we're kind of having a discussion about that with Russ, where apparently there are uh, situations where there is stuff going on where there's kind of like that little backtrack going on. Same thing with Ark is when you're in danger or something changes in the environment, you'll hear that kind of going off. It's, it's Ooh, not like really that. taking like a hold of like the audio, but it's something that's nice and subtle and yeah. kind of fits with the game. So if I'm thinking correctly, like basically you're, I'm over here, I'm, you know, listening to your nice music that you added into the game and it's like nice and soothing. All of a sudden, like I'm getting attacked by a mutant and now the game audio or the game music shifts down to like a lower like volume. And then, you know, I, you hear more of like the, the, the music of them like coming to attack you sort of thing, or like the, the noise of like them coming to attack you. Is that kind of what you're thinking of? Like an ambient noise shift? Yeah, kind of like something playing in the background, situational, depending on what's going on, either in the environment or, as you said, kind of like with a siege going on. Yeah, that, that'd be really cool. So that way, I think that that's kind of really nice. That way, you know, I don't have like the in-game music blaring. I'm like, I love this music. And then, and, you know, I'm getting attacked by like a, a snake or something. Then I'm able to kind of hear that, you know, noise coming from somewhere else. Like, that's actually one of the flaws that I find in um, one of the games that I play right now is I'll be listening to in-game music or music in general or whatever and then um you know all of a sudden like a bunch of hounds are like attacking me and i'm like wait where did those come from and i'm like oh i didn't hear them like it happens all the time not that it annoys me at all because i'm like so used to it now but you know it's definitely nice to have that like kind of volume shift automatically without me having to like do it myself so that's really yeah. cool yeah no i i agree completely I think it's something that'll definitely change the tone of like the game as well, where it kind of makes it a little bit more immersive. Yeah, for just sure. Just having nothing, right? So now it says craft a canteen, and the craft the canteen makes you need to make iron. So okay, so how do how do we make iron? So is there a way to like does it tell you where to make iron at, or do I look? I probably have to look at my. Let's see, go to my. Crafting so tool. if you go to the crafting thing, you'll see a smelter. Um, I think as we go through, like you're noticing, like there's the quest type thing. I'm thinking what would we'll, like in the future is we'll kind of add a little bit more information and kind of where to find out that type of stuff. Okay. That is within that system instead of just having to kind of look for it yourself. That would just make it a little bit easier. You know what these like quick. Uh, numbers remind me of they remind me of uh, Counter Strike when I used to like buy my items in Counter Strike like really really fast. I like that. I think that's mm -hmm. really cool. I, I still like that a lot. It's such a weird feature that you added that really makes a huge thing. Okay, sorry. Where's the we got, like sidetracked here with all these? Okay, so I got door lock, window bars. So where's the smelter at? So the smelter is actually a craftable. So that'll be in your crafting inventory. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm looking in my tool thing. Research thing, smelt there. Okay, so I need stone and twine right, to make that. Did you already make one? Sorry, I didn't know. If you, I didn't know if you ended up. Um, one. I'm coming back. I just need some stone. Then I'll I'll pop one down. Okay. Um, can you attack with your uh crafting tool, or is that does that will that degrade it, or does that do anything? I I think you can, but I don't know exactly how much damage it does. Uh, before we just had it so that it was kind of um, specific to only like say this. Okay, so the system we had before is like when you're placing down a thing, it would put it to full health. Yeah. Um, with the way it is now, after the change, you actually have to repair it to full in order to upgrade it. Mm -hmm. So that adds that animation of you being able to swing it. Um, I haven't tried to kill anything with it because it doesn't seem to be doing much of a damage to enemies or people, but we're also in a PVE zone, so I can't just try to keep whacking you with it. And yeah. It wouldn't do anything to you. Yeah. I also noticed that you can throw your axes and stuff, which is really cool. Yep. You could also throw food items as well. Any, I, I, my axe is stuck on you. Hold on a second. Oop. Thank you. There we go. I had to test that out. So I do have a smelter up. Um, 
Unfortunately, the area that we built in doesn't have that many uh, iron nodes. I think we passed one the other way. I see sulfur nodes over there. Sorry, did you say that you crafted a smelter or you still need yep, us to? So I crafted a smelter. We just need to look for the. Oh, here it is. So if you want to come with me, I'll show you what the iron nodes look like. Okay. Um, on the map, and okay, so I can see you guys on the map and stuff. Um, instead of the large arrows, are you guys gonna alternate into like more of a, like a different, um, like a different indicator on the map at all, or no? Is it is arrows kind of like I for, like I know for me, um, even like a smaller dot would be. Mm -hmm. easier to kind of like look at because the problem with like the the large translucent air or sorry the uh, arrows that have kind of like an outline is that you don't mm -hmm. really know where the player's kind of like sitting at like right now i wouldn't know if mm -hmm. jenny's like behind me or in front of me or like really far behind me because it looks like her arrow is kind of like a little bit close that's not that it matters i mean that's kind of like a, such a minuscule thing mm -hmm. yeah no I, I i agree completely i mean that's something we can definitely explore i don't know if there's very specific plans for that to be changed but it's definitely something we can take a look at if you zoom in on the map on okay so there's m and then you zoom out of the map is there a way to zoom out of the map on your smaller map, map? The, yeah yep so if you hold control okay and mouse wheel in or out nice you should be able to zoom in uh, out. good good, yep. good good okay so i also see there's a triangle that indicates like a is that the starting spawn point i guess if i hover over to tell me or well, maybe not that's i'm assuming so it started. doesn't there is no tooltip for that specific thing but that is the starting area correct okay. and then there's also other areas up here are you guys adding like fog of war at all in on the map I don't yeah. think there's a fog of war uh, plan, but there has been a lot of people that have been suggesting it. Mm -hmm. So it'll definitely be something we will look at and decide kind of based on that. Because I do see like we can kind of just go to the other settlement like instantaneously, right? Because we know where it's at. I guess it, are all mm -hmm. maps uh, pre-gen? Like are we, we know where they're at guaranteed? Or I guess this is like more of a test map anyways. So Yeah, so what's implemented on this map right now is not really the final. Um, with the Kickstarter and the development going further, a lot of stuff, a lot of more custom stuff, because what you're seeing now, a good amount of it's just procedural, Right. aside from some of the monuments that are in the area. Um, so there's definitely going to be more love and care brought in once things continue, and there'll be a lot more variations. And as I was saying uh, earlier, where it's like each different server, there's plans on having it so that there's very specific biomes. So on one server that you're on or one fracture, it'll be what you're seeing now. Another one might be, maybe there's more water, maybe there's snow, maybe there's uh, some cataclysmic event here, maybe a volcano, stuff like that will be features of other stuff and kind of allow you to go to a different server to kind of experience that mm -hmm. instead of just it being as simple as like, oh, you want snow, go north. You want swamps, go bottom, like go southeast, right? Okay, I think that's I think that's nice. Yeah, it's, I was just kind of curious, like more about the map, just because you know it's always nice to have fog of war. That way, you don't know where you're going. But like you said, it's something that you might look into in the future, anyway. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's something that's been suggested quite a bit. So it's definitely something that's on our radar. Nice. Uh, so why were we finding those rocks? Were there is like anything specific? Just finding rocks in general. Uh, so that specific one's an iron uh, rock. Um, oh. That's typically where you'd see it. Um, if you've noticed, it's not the same color as the normal rocks. You want to know what the thing in the middle of my screen reminds me of? Golden eye. The like the little overlay. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. I just remind. I was like, I, and I know it reminds me of something, but it's yeah, it's golden eye. Okay. Yeah. So Fernando, Fernando, I was actually, or sorry, um, we're, Fernando, we were talking about how I couldn't actually change it to um, E, but I think he was saying something like you're planning on changing it, or sorry, not C, uh, con like left control, but left uh, control, yeah. yeah. So it's not like implemented yet, but see, there, that's one key that for some reason I don't know if it's reserved within the engine or what, but it wasn't allowing people to bind it, but that'll be fixed. It's something that I was looking at earlier. Okay. 
Uh, so you can't burn. I was just kind of testing. You can't burn when you're like laying on the fire. Nope. Oh, okay. Okay, so we got the add resources. Is that the uh, is that what you just took the copper? Is that what you have in there? For the resources? So that so that's iron. I added that in. That's what I got from harvesting. Oh yeah, I got the five iron for. Yep. And then you have to put in uh wood Fire. as yep. the fuel source. Yep. Okay. And then from there Ah, uh, okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, does it tell you, so right now we have, we have unsmelted iron inside there and it's just, okay. So I guess you're just automatically, automatically going, okay. It's three times the number of whatever we put in there. So 75, is that what we're expecting to get out of it? So I was just kind of curious if, if the iron will tell you how much you get out of it from what you've put in or wait, maybe that's incorrect. So the amount that you put in will be the amount that it goes in currently. Oh, okay. Um, yep. There, there have been some suggestions to actually have it so that it tells you exactly how many. So if you had multiple stacks or multiple stuff, it would give you an indication on the bottom or indication somewhere on how many will be crafted, like a total type thing. Okay. So I'm assuming I can take the wood out here and replace it with charcoal in there. No, you can't do that. Maybe you need no, charcoal no, for something it, different. Yeah. Okay, yep. so, so yeah, because the, the the one confusing part for me was that um, mm -hmm. when I was looking at, it, I was like, okay, wait, because it looked like it was crafting three, but what it was doing, it was it was smelting three at a time, which was nice because the smelt there was f like fairly quick. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, for some of the sprites that you guys use for, you know, different items, are they are they going to be changed? Like these are kind of just like placeholders right now until a more like HD looking backpack comes in, kind of thing, or are these kind of yeah, so as things progress um, and items change, different custom things come in, uh, icons will be changing as well. Plus, um, as I mentioned, uh, the tooltips when you're hovering over stuff will be implemented as well. Because you'll notice it is when you're going into the crafting menu, but when you're viewing your inventory, it doesn't show it. Right. So we're going to be adding that in just to kind of make things a lot clearer. Okay. Because I know there have been a few issues where people are like, well, as a new player, I don't really know what this is. Yeah. And if I'm in my inventory, they're kind of expecting to be to be able to like know what it is very quickly. And uh, an, to yeah, like an, an easy way of doing it, I mean, if you're gonna keep the sprites that you have would just be a quick hover, like hover over and like it mm -hmm. shows like a little picture of whatever it is, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. Because for example, like I was looking at arrows and I'm like, oh wait, the, like these are, I didn't actually know that I had, like they were very tiny to see. But if you're, like I said, these are just placeholders for now. So that doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. Because comparatively, yeah, the, like the game looks very like clean cut and everything, and everything looks mm -hmm. awesome. And then, just well, obviously, I'm sure these will ref eventually reflect down the road. Yep. Actually, the funny thing is the arrow thing will be is actually already changed uh, on our end, but oh, okay. just hasn't hit production yet. Yeah. Um. So, for, oh, there we go. So you right click to. Or so it's right click to go like that, and then. Left click to let go. Okay. Mm -hmm. See like a wall here. Concrete barrier. E to recycle item. Hold E to recycle item. Do I, uh, is so it... you, uh, so I, there's like an ish, there's a bug right now where you're not able to do that unless you kind of like tab in and tab back out. Okay. Uh, that's being fixed, but also, I'm pretty sure you're only able to recycle barriers that you've placed or that are within your totem. So if someone places something like that um, within their totem and you go into their totem area and try to pick it up, it won't let you. Is there, um, is there going to be like, a, um, I'm noticing when you're aiming down for the arrow, a kind of like a middle dot just to kind of know exactly where you're aiming at. I'm noticing like there's a, there's not really like a crosshair. There's been suggestions in, uh, for that, but uh, I wouldn't, I'm not entirely sure what direction um, okay. we'll be going with that. Um, do, but it has been suggested. Do, do like animals and deer and whatnot, do they generally like just run away if they hear like noise or is it 
How does that, how does that work for that? Like, for example, if I run up to this deer right now, is it run away from noise or just from distance? The deer. Um, I believe it's both. Okay, um, that's or at nice. least I think they're functioning to where that happens. Or if you hit something in a certain area of it. Okay. Yeah. So we're looking for a little more iron. We got 25 right now. So do you have to, generally speaking, do I have to go through the tutorial in order to move on to the? I'm just okay. So this deer probably is bugged. I'm guessing or something. Um, do... Yeah, there's been a few issues with the deer lately, but. Okay. Um, do I have to? Can I find iron through like regular rocks as well too? Or no? Or is it only through uh, the no. ones that we found? Okay. So that specific thing has it. Um, you can also, so say you were in the world, you were scavenging certain items that are made of iron. You can recycle them to get iron as well. So I'm looking on the map right now and I see kind of like a lighter uh, gray color. Is that kind of like an iron deposit or is that another area, something different? Uh, that's just like the area. It's like, um, like the tint kind of like, um, color change within the actual map thing itself. Okay. So, hold on, where am I going to? So now I see a bunch more of these triangles. Like, I didn't see them before. Is this more of like another safe zone? Because it's a road or something? I ran it pretty far so, away. So the area that we're in itself is generally a safe zone until I think you get to, um, if you look, I think it's like at the beginning of longitude and latitude, like the five, five grid. grid. Okay. So once you're getting close to the other icon to the north of us, um, which is actually a communication tower, that's when it starts to go into uh, PVP zone. Okay. Is there a way to remove? So when you're running, is there a way to remove the bobble effect when you're running? Uh, yeah. So if you go into your settings, it should be under Head the bob. gameplay Perfect. tab. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I'm not. I don't get motion sick very well, but that was. <laughs> it can, it's oh, good yeah. to have that option for sure. Um, Travis hit the red barrel. There was a red barrel back there. I didn't even see it. Are any of these cars? Ooh, there's a bird. Is that a bird? It's a chicken. I killed it. Um, I'm just looking for more. I'm just looking for more uh, iron out here, but I don't see any. Uh, so if you come back to where our base is, there is actually an area across the river that has a few spawns, unless someone got to it. Okay. Also, you... yeah, you need to, um, if you go to your inventory, I think, I don't think you equipped your backpack yet. If you double click it, it should. Oh, there we go. Okay. So now, so with the backpack, does it allow more, it allows more storage, but also reduces your stamina loss from running and stuff or no? Uh, no. So okay. there isn't anything specific to weight yet on it. That could change. Uh, right now it's just slot based. Okay. I think you need to get some water too. Yeah, I'm definitely running low on water right now. Attacking away this deer. So I'm gonna upgrade, I think we should upgrade our base a little bit. Um, then I can kind of show you um, kind of the siege system. Okay. Because we are at a point where we would start to attract mutants. Nice. Well, I, I have 10 arrows, so I'm ready to go. <laughs> Just kidding. So how like how far does the tier system go down? Do you start at like arrows, and then you go you get to making crafting ammo and etc 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 etc, or oh there's a, wait, is this, oh it's a rock. I guess you don't want to spoil it until we get to it. I guess. Yeah, I'll run you through kind of um, the thing where we're gonna do like a siege with kind of like the kind of just like bare necessities type thing, okay. just so you can see what it is because it is the it is a base siege, it's not nothing too hard. Um, but as things progress, your base progresses, your base gets bigger, you are going to be um, encountering 
higher difficulty sieges where there's um, there's more uh, variety in what spawns, but also the difficulty of the mutants and the amount of AI that spawns within the waves will be bigger. Okay. So I already have five canteens. So every time you make a canteen, you still have to go back there and refill them. Um, it says canteen zero milliliters. I'm assuming that's probably not accurate. Because it says like the yeah, number yeah, on yeah. the bottom right corner says like five. So that tells mm -hmm. me that I have five canteens. Are canteens reusable or do you only craft canteens and they automatically come with water? So they don't automatically come with water. You have to fill them. Okay. Um, they have five uses. Oh, five uses. Until, okay. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. So probably um, one thing that that would be pretty cool is instead of the number five, might, might indicate like, mm -hmm. like I said, I was a little bit confused, would be like on the bottom right corner of the canteen, like the, having the having like the circle, I guess, kind of, you know, go into five sections, kind of like a piece of a pie, you know what I mean? So like you have like mm -hmm. the first and then it kind of deteriorates that way. So that way you kind of know that it's empty or you can even have like a, interactive like water level of the canteen kind of depreciate over time as well too but i mean like obviously that's stuff that i'm sure you're going to do later on that's my input yeah. on it i mean that's the thing is we're trying to get as much feedback as possible so stuff like that is important even early on because we it is something that we kind of want to have a reference to once that gets visited mm -hmm. um let me put some stuff in here that i don't really keep on me okay, you gotta get this canteen up Tori. Did I make two axes? Yes, I did. Um, are you, is there a way to quickly? Oh, okay. So, oh, wait a minute. Is this like a hot keys? Oh, it is. Wow. That's nice. So you can queue up, you can queue up and click on stuff. That's, that's nice. Yep, the transfer, yep. Yep. So it like cues what you're doing. That's mm -hmm. that's interesting. Actually also is another thing that you'll notice too. Um when you press tab to open up your inventory, mm -hmm. um, you'll notice that there's chests on the bottom. Uh of your inventory? Yep, so go to your inventory at the bottom right, it'll say loot. Um you'll see loot icon, so you'll see the bag which is like your the ground loot and then you'll see like the chest tabs mm -hmm. if you click them it'll open them up so you'll be able to access them so if you're in front of multiple chests you'll be able to kind of filter those and deposit stuff into those chests without opening them without opening them oh, directly wow. so you can just like as long as you're in the vicinity of them you can just easily just mm -hmm. wow. yeah and then example is like um right click on one of the chests tools ammo and you can still do that as well too and you'll you can kind of set the icon to indicate what it is hmm oh these are oh oh okay sorry i was like drawing it like my my brain shut off once again so this is the mm -hmm. one chest this is the other chest okay because yep. i've seen like the number seven and i was like wait a minute what does that mean okay so i see what you're saying okay that's awesome so then i can go Oh, wow. So, okay. That's cool. So I can be like, Hey, I'm, oh, wow. That's really, oh, nice. Travis always makes me organize this chest. I do. And most game, like, and it's very odd, but in a lot of games, you know, it's very annoying having to open up like 75 chests in a row just to access like, you know, mostly rocks or something like that. Right. So it's nice to actually have this and you can quickly. So what is the loot just out of curiosity? What's around you? Yeah, so it's what's around you. Um, I can't remember the exact range, but it's pretty large. You can drag a chest on top of the other one to place all the contents inside of that as well, too. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> no way. And there have been suggestions to be able to name the chest, kind of like what you'd have in Ark, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. Wow, that's really cool. That'll be something we definitely look into. Um, hmm. I know Ryan, our project director, is really uh good with coming up with ways to kind of make things a lot more efficient um how are you upgrading all the walls is there like an upgrade tool yep so if you go into your inventory there's an upgrade uh tool and 
you right click to select what material you want to upgrade it to. So, uh, upgrade tool, reset it. Oh, upgrade. It's literally called an upgrade tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go downstairs and <clears throat> make some meat. So, where does that meat go? So once again, I should be able to access my chest. Or, so, how close do you have to? So I guess you have to be somewhat close-ish um, to the chest in order to access them. Like, what's the vicinity once again? I don't know the exact units for it, but it looks like if I'm over here. So you have to be about almost like a like a within a, a foundation. Yeah, foundation away. away. Yeah. Okay. So if you're in like a room with a bunch of chests, it might be a little bit tough, but still pretty good. It's better than anything else I've seen. Okay, so now we got some charcoal meat. And then while you're in there, quantity, right click is eating. Nope, I don't know what I just did. Oh, I dropped on the ground, okay. So can you eat the item within your inventory or do you have to place it in your hand in order to eat it? Like a, from what I see, so right click automatically drops it. I think there's a... Yeah, you need to uh, place it on the slot, yeah. Yeah, you need to place it on the slot, but there's also a context menu. I don't know, it's one of the side mouse buttons. Uh, it's still being worked on. I can't remember which one it is, but... Um, the option to be able to do it in your inventory is definitely coming. Are you making it so the food slowly rots over time, or are you just not going to bother with that at all? I believe the plan is to have it so that it does spoil. Okay. Um, I know there are plans to do a lot more with the uh, food system as the game progresses. Characters out of stamina. Oh, so as soon as you select wood, it auto... Okay. Hmm. Do I not have enough wood? Oh, I do have enough wood. Okay. How high up can I get to be kind of near it? So say I'm making like a gigantic foundation and I have the walls and everything placed. Do I have to have... Um, a way, I guess you have to jump in order to access them. Like, say this was like five stories high, and I made like an outside wall accessible, I guess I'd have to jump in order to get to it. Either jump or kind of have scaffolding, but I believe if you do it in first person, uh, there is like a slight issue between first person and third person, where third person you can't access it as far. Okay. Uh, that's something that's being taken, uh, people are taking a look at it, so that'll be fixed as well. How much wood does it use in order to upgrade what we were just upgrading, like the thatch and whatnot? Uh, it should tell you on the right side. I think it's, uh, is it 15? So it wasn't much then, because I, was, I thought it was, I didn't see that it was going down. Maybe it was using something else instead. Okay. Wow, that looks a lot nicer. So I like how, so as you upgrade, like different designs get put onto the walls and stuff. That's really, really cool. Materials is taken from the totems first, but the oh, that's why, because it was taken from the totems. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I forgot about that because I was like, I was looking at my inventory, going like, I don't see anything going down, but that makes sense now. Are you yeah, guys? If there wasn't anything in there, um, it would tell you. Right. Are you plan? Are you planning on making a um, like say if we did have this like a five story, six story, seven story building to make like kind of like a quick scaffolding by any chance? Kind of like a Minecraft uh, situation building blueprint. Yeah, well, not necessarily like say say if I have um say I we have a like I'm missing one spot at the very top and I can't jump and the only option cuz if you think about it right on, on the outside the, the way you've built the walls right now, I don't know if can you access them on the inside? I don't know. These ones you can cuz you had stairs going up but the other way you couldn't. Um, may, maybe like a quick ladder or something to just like, are there ladders in the game at all right now? So I guess I probably should ask that first. Oh, uh, so there aren't ladders. Uh, there's plans to increase 
the item, the amount of items for stuff like that. So okay. there will be stuff that kind of utility sure. construction pieces. So that that's good then, because if you build like a ladder, then I can easily just access like upgrading it. That's perfect. Okay, no problem then. Um, okay, cool. So now we're on that. You can build like foundations with a stair and then recycle this afterwards. Okay. Yeah, that's act that actually makes sense. I guess it depends on how high up you want to make it go. Like most people are probably not going to make like this. You never know though. I mean, people are pretty creative. It's hard to say. Yeah, um, with thatch though, you should be able to make a good amount of scaffolding. Yeah. Um, and since you, if you recycle the piece, because um, if you have your construction tool or recycle tool, I mean uh, upgrade tool, um, equipped, you can recycle the piece for the full amount. Um, right now, it's currently. Um, implemented so that you can't recycle something that someone else placed, but that's being changed. Is there a way in the future to make hotkeys? Um, not necessarily like ones that you can adjust yourself, but say I'm running around and I'm like, okay, you know what? I don't want to, I don't, I want to have my repair tool out. Okay. You press R and your boom, your repair tool fall, like goes into your hand automatically instead of me having to scroll through. Uh, my scroll wheel. I guess it's the same as doing one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Um, but like, so for example, I guess like one, because right now it's there's. I mean, I guess it, you just kind of have to know what's in your inventory. That's not a that's not a huge problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a huge problem. I I think just for me, like if I were to be able to press like R for repair tool, like B for well, it would be zooms in, but like just R for repair tool and then for like crafting tool or something like that that'd be like pretty easy to switch between the both of them just to kind of kind of quick switch but that, like i said that's kind of just whatever i was just kind of thinking about it like an add-on utility that might be pretty interesting if you're trying to like build and focus on building and just upgrading um okay I mean, so it definitely could be a suggestion yeah for sure um it's a matter of like time to get like acquainted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, I, th I think that this what you guys have going on right now. I, I'm fine. This is like basically how every game is, right? It has like your little hopper in the bottom. I think it's for me that with with not seeing the like what utility is on my um like for example, like most utility would be on the bottom where the fish like your food, your hunger bar and all that stuff is listed. So because I can't see that, I'm like, okay, sorry, is it, it where's my pickaxe? Is it one, two, three, four, five? I have to press scroll in order to see that, which is not a huge problem, but time saver wise, like, is there, would there ever be an option to have that appear at the bottom or is that part of the UI function down the road? I mean, that's something we can definitely explore. Cause I, I do know that there have been quite a few people that, um, don't like the system where it's like you need to scroll your mouse bar or press the numbers to see your inventory your yeah. action bar um so we'll definitely be taking stuff like that uh into consideration and see if we can come up with something that uh works for everyone yeah yeah exactly i mean i like what you have right now but i think even having that ability to either say enable hot bar or disable hot bar or something like that. And then that way it's like either shows or doesn't show. Cause some people like it. Some people don't like, it looks very clean cut right now. Like the overlay that you have going on, but like I might, sometimes it might be nice to just have like that there. Mm -hmm. Um, so if you two can come back, we'll get, I do want to get, uh, you guys some sleeping bags going. So oh, I, perfect. I crafted them. So I'll get you guys. Cause I don't want to have to, uh, have us kind of like come back and hey delish uh we're playing uh the new well we're playing fractured veil the one that is uh still in production right now but we're just got a sneak peek for it with the with the dev right now by the way all the suggestions that i'm like writing with will have your name and oh yeah that's perfect perfect oh yeah yep so like usually when we do implement something on our steam updates and our discord updates will list the player who kind of made the uh, the suggestion. Okay. Kind of give them like a note, like, hey, like, you know, thank you so much for suggesting something. Like, uh, give them some credit, you know what awesome. I mean? Awesome, yeah, I appreciate that, that's cool. How much stone do I need to upgrade? Not enough materials. Uh, it says 47, do I not have, I have 47, cool. Oh, I, I need 100, I'm, oh my God. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, were you making bed rolls, you said? Yep, so I dropped them right beside the campfire. What's the difference between a bedroll and having the totem? Like if I die right so now and I don't have a bedroll, mm -hmm. what's the difference? So the difference is the bedroll or the bed is a spawn point. The totem is just a claim. It's a claim over the area. So if someone wanted to come into this area, 
uh, to try to build or play something down they wouldn't be able to. Okay. Um, unless their name was on the totem. Okay, so when it comes to placing items, so I don't know if it's like, I'm sure it's something like to be worked on later later on. Lady, thank you so much for the, sorry about this. <laughs> lady, thank you so much for the 20 months. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank you, thank you. How's it going, lady? We're showcasing Fractured Veil right now. Um, so this is a, uh, this is a new upcoming game. I'm, it's a mix of Ark and Rust for the looks of it. Yeah, it's really, really cool, delicious. It features like a lot of uh, different things that, like a lot of different games kind of like all in one. And it's nice to, to kind of see that. So when you're placing a bedroll, for example, you have the green indicator that kind of showcases, okay, this is where you're going to be placing it. Um, one thing might be um, for certain items, I don't know, this is kind of like whatever, I'm sure you guys can change that other way, is a contrast of like, like the green, like, so if you look, um, the contrast of the green is might, is, it seems to be like, I don't know if it's, is that just cause of lighting in the room that it looks like that? Cause you have like the red that kind of contrast almost mm -hmm. with the flooring. That's one thing. But I was gonna say, when you go to place an item, so for example, this chest, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a way to have it where, um, if a line next to each other, they kind of align in like more of a straighter, cause I, I most games well not most games, but some games that I've had, if you, Kind of rotate your middle mouse button or something like that you do have it where it rotates but it rotates more in um, like a smooth kind of transition so then that way you can kind of easy you know place them down a little bit easier kind of thing so they're a little bit more straighter than that or not that that really matters but sometimes i mean it, it can be i know i know a few people that would be like oh my gosh it bothers me so much that these chests are not that straight <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you if you give me some like uh, games that have a good example of kind of like a s angle snap, yeah, that kind of base go off like the adjacent piece, I can okay. definitely take a look at that and make that suggestion. The one game that I'm talking about is actually Raft, um, mm -hmm. but the one thing that bothers me with Raft is that you can angle it whatever you want. So you rotate your middle mouse button, and then it, you rotate it all the way you want, whatever way way you want. It doesn't really matter, but it would be nice if you have the option to auto um, like align chests. So for me, like I'm like a big, I mean, I obviously people, you know, OCD kind of style, right? I don't ha like, I don't have it, but I mean, I definitely feel like I do sometimes when I'm playing games like DST and stuff like that, especially. And it's nice to just, if you put a chest against the wall to have them, you know, kind of look nice and neat. I know, I know some people don't care about that, but some people might, I guess I, that's just my like take from it. But the rotating thing is more important than the actual, um, than the actual mm -hmm. alignment of the chest. It doesn't really matter to me. Yeah. I mean, that's something we'll definitely take a look at because, um, we want to kind of introduce the really good quality of life changes that a mm -hmm. lot of these games already have. So any suggestions for stuff like that is definitely super helpful to us. Oh, that's what the game was. It was, uh, it was Valheim. It has auto snap. So Valheim is, I think is auto snap. Yeah. So you can turn it, I think you can enable or disable it though, but yeah, auto snap feature allows us to, when you're placing chests next to each other, they're automatically aligned right away. So that's kind of, that's kind of basically like might be a feature that, like I said, you can add later on. Okay. So we got the, the bed roll E to alter bed roll spawn name. Oh, okay. So you can name your spawn. Oh, mm -hmm. and we are adding the ability to uh, actually pick it up. So that'll be coming soon as well. Okay. So I'm thinking to start the siege, I'll kind of have us with, I'll craft us some bows, maybe just like a, a pistol kind of like, cause it is a little basic wave and then we'll kind of move up from there. Okay. Um, because it is already six o'clock and we can play, continue to play. I just don't want to, I just want to kind of streamline the sure. process of what we're doing. Yep. Uh, also, while you're in the crafting bench, if you look to the left of the label, there's an icon that you can click that'll change the view type. Uh, it should be a oh, yeah, yellow yeah, yeah. or orange. Okay, I see it. Yep. Yeah. So that actually kind of like alter. I like the well, I like the the default that you have for the crafting bench though. I do like that. That's really cool. So I see smelter which we've already made. Oh, you're making guns. How are you making guns? Oh, are they under just? So I have them learned. Oh, okay. Um, so what you would need to do is, um, so you know the Rye currency that you've received earlier, right? Mm -hmm. yep. While you're yep. finishing quests. And if you kill mutants, you can get that as well. Um, okay. But also while you're harvesting, there's a resource called 127. Um, you get that from harvesting, killing mutants, looting uh, specific loot containers in the dungeon, stuff like that. You bring that to the Thorcon place where we spawned. At the main floor, there's a... Uh, 
127 converter. And what that'll do is it'll change that into a resource, which is basically energy. And energy is used um, to research stuff, but also to be put into your totem to um, actually provide like a shield depending on your totem's level. Okay. So I will actually, so I'll give you that gun and I'm going to give you the stuff just to show you what the researching process is like. I'll craft one too. So, so, okay. So we take the, so the 127, whereabouts would that be found? So the 127 itself is something that you loot from both monsters and have a chance to loot while you're harvesting resources. So you take the 127 to, you know, the place where we spawn. We spawn to the top floor. We go to the bottom floor. In the center of that room, there will be a 127 converter. You put that in the inventory. It'll take one 127 and 10 rye and convert it into 10 energy. Okay. And then from the energy, that's where you're able to craft, like, like learn blueprints and whatnot? Yep. And the energy is bound to your character. So if so you, it's not something you'll lose. So where, like, um, I guess as we craft a canteen and go on and go on and go on and go on, will it tell you, mm -hmm. okay, it's time to go find energy or find one twenty seven? Yeah, I think there should be a quest that you have to gather a certain amount of it. So it will run you through the process to where you can actually see it. Okay. Yeah, because there's just to make sure that like there's an indicator on on how to actually get that in case people are like confused on that. So that's cool. All right. So the so how far does the how far does the tool t like the the tips go? Like, does it go to the end of you crafting like things in metal and and whatnot after that, or does it eventually like stop? So it is a fairly new quest system that we implemented. I believe it gets to the point where you upgrade your totem, which does require you to have already gotten 127 and um converted it into energy okay because if you notice downstairs when you go into the inventory of the totem it'll tell you what the daily upkeep is but also the requirements to upgrade oh okay so it requires five energy okay and depending on the uh requirements of the totem or the tier of your totem, you'll increase in inventory slots to allow you to put more resources into the totem. And then once you get, I think it's the third tier of the totem, you'll get a buff to the surrounding construction pieces as long as you have a certain amount of energy within your totem. Okay. Um, Sky, are you asking like when we're going to be starting to stream D and D again? Uh, so D and D is unfortunately like on hold as of right now. We've been uh, we have we haven't been able to do another episode past our I don't even know how many episodes we had. 60 <laughs> uh so we're we're almost uh we're kind of like i said we're on a big standstill right now for that um okay so i'm gonna get uh, my canteen the one thing i was actually gonna ask was so when i'm in a chest or sorry when i'm when i press tab and i have my hot bar and i press control and i click on a coconut that drops it on the ground um, mm -hmm. but what about if I want to shove it from my from my hot bar to my inventory? Is there not a quick switch for that? Like shift, uh, shift or something? Unfortunately not. You just need to click and drag. Uh, okay. So like, that would be kind of cool. Like maybe like a hold shift and then boom, it just automatically goes over. Mm -hmm. uh, that'd be yeah. kind of interesting. Or like a double click or whatever, just something like that. Or even just have the right click transfer it into your inventory first instead of dropping it yeah yeah for sure or, or double click yeah double click would be okay i think i think holding shift would be easier because especially if you're trying to clear out your entire inventory it's like a fast way of doing it um but i mean whichever it's like i said you guys can decide all that stuff for sure but um, okay, that's awesome for sure, for sure. Um, Paddle Creek, thank you so much for, <laughs> thank you so much for the awesome follow-up. Thank you for the gift of subs as well too. The Chief Moose and <laughs> Rasam, welcome to the funhouse and Joey emotes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so now if we, okay, so yeah, so that was one, that's kind of, kind of one thing that I wanted to suggest. That's cool. Um, now the the burn time for the wood, I'm assuming that just continuously goes on until the wood is like dead, like that, like just like how it normally is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. 
I'm gonna leave some on there just because. What's the average burn time? Oh, d like of the total burn time. Because it says burn time for one piece. Is there a... Is there a burn time for total? Oh, I guess it's not. That's okay. It doesn't really matter about that. It doesn't matter. Here, that that's always been... totally worth it. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, that has been... Uh... That was one of the suggestions as well as having like certain things to kind of indicate that more within that UI screen. Um, yeah, I believe that's in the suggestions channel because it does make it a lot easier when uh, a lot more stuff is listed. But it's something we'll definitely be taking a look at. Delish, thank you for sending some food. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Delish. Poor Brandon, yeah. Uh, Fernando says, um, hold on one second. Uh, Fractured Veil, thank you for the follow. Thank you for the gift of sub to Strong Claw. Thank you, thank you. Um, Fernando says, can you tell Brandon that he'll have a lot of a lot of work to read all suggestions made here <laughs> yeah so the one yeah, thing i mean the, yeah, the nice thing about this is like this is what i like about these streams is yeah. it gets a lot of ideas flowing and it gets things that we might not even have just even thought of yet for sure and it's something it's important to have that kind of like reference so it's like it's not just me looking at it ryan's looking at it even fernando's looking at it and it's like we're all taking a look at it and kind of bringing stuff up and be like hey you know this would be once it gets to a point where something like that would be implemented there's that reference there and you could be like hey like let's give this guy credit let's give uh this discord user credit and it ends up in multiple places so it's like the recognition on what Hot their contribution train. has Hello. is like Dude. kind of important to us yeah i think it's one of those things where thank you for the cheers by the way Kawhi. Ooh, hype train let's go um this is one of those things where, yeah, if you ever, like, I mean, I, I don't know if you ever offer it more than once, but I'm not, like, trying to say, like, put you on the spot and say, oh, yeah, come on, let's do this. But if you, if this runs, because I feel like we've, I mean, for me, I've been enjoying the game, plus enjoying the suggestions. Lady, thank you for the cheer that, like, we're kind of coming up with along the way. But if you ever decide, like, hey, there's an open spot to do another stream and we can showcase it again and kind of, like, further on, like, especially if we don't go that as far as you thought we would get kind of thing, mm -hmm. I'm down to keep going and offer more suggestions as well too not that i would have as many of uh, that i had already um but yeah, i yeah. mean we're we're constantly upgrading the game and it's it's something we're always uh something that always there's always something new and it's like uh a good example is for today where you're like oh should we do x amount of time or like an hour and it's like hours really doesn't show as much as uh that we have already in i think some people thought we might have less but um, we could definitely go a lot longer than what we're doing today. Yeah, for we sure. Can kind of revisit stuff as more updates get pushed in because, um, as like the whole Kickstarter thing is happening, we're actually still releasing updates and fixing stuff, and it's something that we'll definitely be able to revisit and experience something new each yeah, time. Because it's nice to like. I mean, I would I would hate to just be like, okay, you know, like we're you know here and then we just <laughs> kind of end it and then I don't actually get to experience more and then give you more tips on that if I could, I guess, right? But it's nice to I think one thing that I really really like is um, being able to kind of interact with you know the developer while the game is like kind of being implemented, so that way you can be like, hey, like you know this is something that we kind of thought of kind of thing along the way and kind of, you know, helped like kind of get put into it. So the one thing, I, sorry, I guess the one thing I was talking about the fireplace. Um, oh, sorry, Fractured. Yeah, uh, yeah, Nightbot is like <laughs> anti-links. Hold on a second, give me one second. I'll repost that for you. Um, so the one thing that uh, I was saying about the, the campfire, which would be nice, like I'm one where if I walk into a room and like a nice campfire is on, it's kind of it's kind of nice and soothing. But I, I noticed that the burning time is very quick not that it matters like the burning time is fine but i was that's why i was asking about like a total burn time so you know that would be kind of something that i, I think that'd be really cool because i for one like the atmosphere of like a are you guys oh wait I, I guess my question is instead of a campfire is there ever going to be like a uh like a wall fire or something like that or more of like a decorative piece i mean that would definitely be a good question for ryan who's in the chat as fraction veil fraction oh, okay veil. Yeah, because like the fire pit looks awesome, but I mean it looks better lit up, right? Um, so I didn't know if there was an option to leave it on without smelting, maybe or something. I don't know. Maybe that's just me that thinks that. But <laughs> hey, Carol, how's it going? Um, okay, sorry. We so we've upgraded from from wood to stone, um, and then now we have a gun. So in order to if we go up to the to the totem. I noticed that there's a thing called siege times one. Do you have to mm -hmm. put energy to create a siege in your base? 
or what does this say? Because it says siege times one. Oh wait, I just pressed it. Oh, did you click it? I oh. did. Yeah. Okay. Does that mean a siege uh, is about to happen? Yes. Okay. Let me <laughs> okay. craft you. Okay. Go into the crafting bench, and I'll get you a bunch of <laughs> okay. ammo. Okay. I have I have some ammo right now. Ooh, there's like spooky music. I like that. Sorry, I trapped it on purpose. No, no, I didn't. I swear, I was. I didn't know what I was doing. It's all mystics. Oh, here they come. I can hear them. <laughs> Should we open the front door? Maybe it's somebody that wants to come in here and live with us. <laughs> oh, so there's a... Uh... Oops, I didn't mean to jump off the building. So not only do they attack you, do they attack... It looks like they attack your structures as well, too. Yep. Nice, that's really cool. So I am going to adjust the time of day just because it's really difficult to see stuff right now. Uh, what is? If you don't mind. Sure, that's fine. Um, so I have left leg bleeding, right leg bleeding, broken leg, bleeding torso. You're in. Ca oh, okay. Press Y to respawn now, or, or N to dismiss the message and wait it out. So if I wait it out, does that mean that I will eventually come back up, or is it not possible? Uh, if I revive you. Okay, I'm gonna press N. I'm gonna wait for the revive. Can I still shoot when I'm down? I guess you can. Just very hard to see. Thank you, thank you. So what's the average loot? Like, are you able to find, um, are you able to find like really good loot from the mutants and stuff? Or is it uh, pretty basic as time goes on? It gets, so like, better. mainly right now it is um, the rye, the currency, which is used for a majority of the stuff in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, there might be plans in the future to make uh, different sieges and different difficulties a lot more of it. Or uh, also, the, there is the 127, the chance to get 127 while you're looting them as well. Okay. Um. Then I'm assuming I pick up my loot. Is there a loot all button for your inventory or no? So you should be able to hold the um, F key or the interact key while you're looking at your body. Um, I right now currently though you need to pick up the backpack before you're able to loot it all. Right. It does add the slots. I, I just got hit again. You need to use med kits. <laughs> Are med kits extremely hard to craft? Um, so it's not so much that they're uh, not easy to craft. You have to find them in order to research them first. Okay. So we'd have to go into different areas of the map to loot them first before we're able to craft them. Okay. So you'd be stuck using bandages Ooh. until that point. This is really cool. They, you guys, you have, um, you have, like uh, mutants or or whatnot that are actually, um, like distance. Like they're attacking you from a distance. I really like that. It's really cool. What's the what's the is that gas? Red gas? Or is that spawning? Is that for like a spawner for other mutants to go and attack that area? So that is the siege indicator to kind of let you know that uh, it's there's an active siege when it's um, red or orange or like the the color of it indicates the difficulty and when it goes away that means uh, the seat the wave is over. Okay. Uh, sorry, no, I mean like you have mutants that throw like a green gas at the building. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that is poison. So if you actually go inside of the clouds, it you'll start to take uh, toxicity. Your toxicity levels will increase. Okay. Why did you grab your gun that was inside the the chest? I didn't know. I had enough ammo. I like how fast uh, the the base is getting destroyed from. It sounds odd, right? Like it sounds like oh, why would you be happy about that? But it's kind of nice because. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, I mean, I'm saying like a lot of games, what ends up happening, like I said, is you have a base that just is so protected that, um, you know, there's, there's nothing. Like no can, threat. Yeah, there's no threat. You're just standing there like, oh, look, our whole base is like completely, you know, protected forever. I can stand here and be AFK kind of thing. You know what I mean? So it's really nice to see like get destroyed pretty easily. And at a distance too, like mutants that, I mean, I want to keep saying zombies, mutants that, um, mm -hmm. That attack from afar is really, really interesting because it forces you to obviously go out and kill them, right? So it's it's really cool about that. I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, you'll notice is like those are the exact mutants you would need to actually like take out 
really quickly is the range ones because those are the ones that do a good chunk of damage to your base and then you have the mutants with the the butchers that have the cleavers those ones you actually have to take out as well because they do they'll go into melee range of the construction piece and they will do quick work right of, um construction pieces as well cool i also like to hold e where you actually don't even have to like open up the inventory of yourself and just hold e in order to pick up stuff that's pretty nice yeah also we because it was like a surprise siege we didn't have like barricades we we didn't have any others like walls to kind of hold them in we kind of just had like the basic you know like stuff going right yeah i also was kind of curious as, as well too um indicators of previously or unlooted or looted bodies is that something that you guys want to have or not something that you want to have I guess it's probably well, not a good yeah. idea because you kind of don't want to have that. Um, kind of want to have like the mystery of like, is this body looted or is it not looted? Yeah, um, that is a good point. I think, yeah, I would probably lean towards not having it just because, yeah. especially in like a PvP area, it's like you kind of want people to risk it. Yeah, exactly. Because like it, it would be too much like, oh, there's one over there that's not looted or something like that. Um, are you, when your game gets released, are you guys allowing um, like mods from the Steam Workshop to be implemented at all, or or is that kind of like a like a later on situation down the road? So I believe the situation with mods is because kind of how like the server uh, architecture of our game works is um, it's it's difficult it's going to be difficult for us to actually allow players to mod certain things. I think we're going with like the Rust route where it's like uh, cosmetics. Oh, okay. So people Ooh, nice. will be able to do their own kind of skins and so, submit those, and then we'd have those in the game. So one thing that I don't know if, like, it, this has nothing to do with, like, uh, suggestion. Well, I guess it is a suge suggestion. Is a lot of games implement drop systems for their games, right? So they have, you know, get yourself a free drop, blah, 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 kind of thing. Are you guys doing more of, like, a pay for skins kind of thing? Or are you offering, like, anybody can have, like drop like, whatever skins they want in the game as long as it's put into like a situation because like right now for example certain games offer drops like what i'm sure you know on mm -hmm. twitch you watch and then everybody in that that watches the stream or whatever after a few hours gets that in-game drop is that kind of something that you're looking into as well too so since we still are early on in the point it is something that we are going to be looking into it's just there hasn't been any decisions made on okay. anything like that but we, we're definitely looking at all all the options that does help like really boost not only the game but like you know just like anybody that showcases your game as well too gets like a lot of people mm -hmm. in chat and stuff it's it's a huge way of i mean in my opinion like most games should do it i think that if they're if they're offering game like skins in game i think it's a good option but mm -hmm. if if you're not offering skins then it's not really a beneficial like in any way kind of i mean considering that that is kind of like the route we're going with wanting to add cosmetic choices and stuff like that where community members can actually get involved and create stuff too i think it is something that would be beneficial but it it's something we have to take a look at and see whether or not that works for us but um i like it i like when it comes to that stuff i i feel like it does drive people to play the game it does kind of promote people being on at a certain time and actually tuning into specific streamers that they like so. yeah it's just it's it's i find like uh drop systems are are really nice to i was curious when when you're holding the torch how come you why does your character hold it over top of his head like in a angled view is that just like how it is to so it doesn't take up so much real estate kind of thing or is it just like an alternate view for the for the torch um so it's it's just mainly like how the animation that we have implemented okay. is that's um, actually looks it looks i think it's because when you're third person first person that's how you hold in a rust as well too okay so yeah sorry going back to the the drop thing yeah i feel like i i do think it's it's a i mean coming from a streamer standpoint it does make a huge difference in like a game like early on especially because people see drops and they're like "Ooh, free stuff and then you know they 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 pull and they just go crazy for them right so it just i think it makes a huge um boost in the I think it just kind of helps advertise your game more than anything else, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And if you ever have any questions on like stuff like that as well too, like oh, because like I mean, I obviously do it in certain games that I play, and like drops work really, really well. I mean, they help me like more than anything else as a streamer. So if you ever have any questions like about, you know, what do you think? What do you think about this as a drop or system or blah blah blah? blah just always ask. I mean, I'm down to answer any questions for sure too. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're open to having as many discussions as uh, we can with streamers to kind of uh, get a good feel of what they, what their kind of content is and how, you know, our game can kind of work for them, especially yeah. since like we're very community driven. So it's like we rely on a lot of these suggestions to kind of um, get the chance to be kind of showcased. And mm -hmm. when you're working with content creators and streamers, it's like you're getting a point of view that you don't typically get. Yeah, for sure. So it's, it's very it's crucial to get the, these opinions early on, in my opinion. The one thing I noticed when you are over a body was I can't. There's no bodies right now, anyways, that are not burned except for maybe this one. Is there an option to burn the body without looting it, or no? It's basically you have to loot the body first and then you can burn it. it looks like I guess that's actually so, how it is. Yeah. yeah. So before we had it, so it actually that was a recent change. Before we had it, where you actually. If you had the torch, you'd burn it first, so you'd lose the the currency. Okay. Uh, people didn't like that, so we changed it. Um, okay. But it's definitely something that uh, I it's like a personal preference. Personally, I loot and then equipped. But... Oh yeah, for sure. I think it's just like one of these things. Like say, say this is you know I've been I have you know four thousand hours in the game or something, and my base is just riddled with zombie or with mutants, and then. I have like a bunch of currency that I don't even care about and then I'm just I guess at that point there might be different loot that I might need to keep and then at that point I'm just like you know what I don't care about this currency let's just go ahead and burn the the bodies instead of looting them mm -hmm. you know what I mean might be a because like I think it's one of those things where so I guess if people have torches in their hand they so before you said before the update you had a torch in your hand you walk up and you would automatically light the body on fire and people did, did not like that if they had a torch in their hand so yeah, so there is the option where you can just run up and actually just smack it twice in order to ignite it. Mm -hmm. Just by hitting it with the left click instead of uh, like holding that, F, yeah. which actually takes longer. Um, so there is the option for the, that there. But people were um, saying that they didn't like the fact that um, when you had it equipped, because if it was nighttime and you're trying to loot something and it just goes up in flames and you lose the loot, it wasn't a good system to them. Okay. Um, I'm just kind of curious about that. So there's one thing that's kind of not game related, but you might want, there's something that you could potentially look into. Um, which I found it only ever happened in one game. I forget what the name of what game it was, but if you look at OBS, or sorry, OBS, if you look at my stream, uh, like my, my camera and while you're not moving and my, and I'm moving my hands, for example, my camera and like the stream's not stuttering, but then as you move in the game and then you also move your, now I'm beginning to like move my arm. It's very like stuttery. That usually happens when a game is either like losing frames outside of the actual like picture. Um, and it's mm -hmm. the only game that that ever happened in. And I don't remember the name of it. Um, it doesn't happen in any other game, but it, uh, so I can't really say like what the fix is. Usually mm -hmm. the fix for that is changing your graphics to, um, like from windowed full screen back to full screen mode. Um, so I, I'll try that right now just to see mm -hmm. if that makes any difference. And then I move my hand again and it doesn't happen. So windowed full, full screen windowed might not actually like it might be okay for now, but there also could be an issue with that i usually i don't remember the game that that happens in but it does look like it's a windowed full screen thing versus a full screen will definitely fix that problem and that's more of like okay. just like leaking frames it's it uh, it happens in obs exclusively probably in streamlabs obs as well too so just from mm -hmm. a streamer standpoint it might be something to just like you could always just test it yourself just run obs and say you know oh, yeah have I all mean, that that'll definitely be thank you for that because i didn't even realize that yeah uh, it does it, it happens like i really wish i remembered the game i don't i don't remember it all it might have been it might have been PUBG. I, I don't know. I think it could have been actually PUBG actually when it happened. It was so long ago when I when it happened. It doesn't happen in very many other, many games anymore. But um, see, PUBG is made in the same engine. That's so what I be... I was gonna say. Like it looks like the similar graphics. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's possible that you know if it's if it's that then it makes perfect sense why it's happening. And that was a fix for PUBG. Just go full screen. Never don't go. But most streamers enjoy windowed uh full screen window like you know windows full screen because at that point you don't have to tab out when the game's open because when you tab out and full screen 
the the game shuts down and you generally lose feed for a few seconds where if it's a uh, windowed full screen then that doesn't happen also i like this is this like a scrap out like upgrade outside yep so this is the iron tier so this is the maximum tier that we currently have cool. in game i'm just getting this place uh kind of like going a little bit so we can do another siege but like with a little bit more difficulty okay i'll make sure not to press it real fast oh there's the sham <laughs> there's this the sham ham thing. That's i see like all that stuff that's cool so um for your garry's mod has that issue as well too if not mistaken i've never tried garry's mod before so i can't really say for sure but yeah it sounds like something garry's mod would have Dave ice this is really cool i like how the Man, I really like the, um, it sounds weird, but I like like the art that you, you used, kind of. It's really nice. And I also noticed, like, it's like if we look on this door, above this door, there's something. Above this door, there's not. Is it randomized what is where for the aesthetics for, like, the, um, like, the lay and stuff like that over top of the doors? Does it, like, go one, of the, one and then, like, see if I had a row of ten doors or something would it be like would it be cons consistent like a lay no lay 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 like kind of thing or how does it work for that so it is it is consistent unless you have the outside of the door frame facing the wrong way okay so the inside there's like inside walls outside walls type thing where okay. there you'll you'll notice it actually more with the uh stone i'll come down to you and show you real quick cuz i do like that um how it would be consistent because then obviously at that point, like I said, people with, you know, the people that are very OCD, they're like, okay, I definitely have to have it where it's consistent. Like that's going to be perfect. I like that. Um, is there also a, um, is there also a ping on the server that you're on? So like the one that we're connecting to right now, is there a way to find out your ping? I don't think there's a, there's like a, there's a command to do it within that's a, okay. unreal, yeah, yeah. but uh, there's no built-in one. That's something we can definitely look into implementing, though. So what happens on the server with, like, on launch day when you have one server that's maxed at 500? Uh, are you planning on having multiple servers? Um, like, I guess, are you, are you guys planning on having, like, multiple servers with different things kind of, like, in different areas? Or, or how is that going to work? I guess like so. so it's like oh, sorry, I because before I do lose my train of thought. Like for example, I'm on a server, and I spend uh, 500 hours in the server, and then uh, before I know it, you're like the game becomes very popular, and now the server that I'm playing on, which originally hosted like all the original people, is now packed full and packed to like the 500, and now there's only like there's a queue time in order to get in and, and whatnot. And then in order for me to get in, I have to basically wait a little bit to get in. So now I'm kind of forced to go to a different server that's not so populated. What is mm -hmm. kind of like stopping the, what is kind of stopping people from, um, you know, being limited to getting back in the server once it's full, if that's even possible. I know people at 500 is a large number. So chances are there won't be 500 actively on the server 24 seven. Chances are somebody will leave and another person can join in. But like, what is the, you know, what is the possibility of like kind of something like that happening? Um, I mean, that's something we'll have to actively have to take a look at uh, once that starts happening. Uh, like once we go to implement that system, because right now it's just we only have, since it's uh, closed testing, we only have one dedicated server for what's going on right now. Right. But as the Kickstarter happens and we start letting people in in certain waves uh, and we bring on more servers, that's something we'll be actively looking at. But we won't, when it comes to those waves, we won't be bringing in more people than there is space for the okay. server yeah so i guess that's kind of what i was thinking is that like if um because most of the time when it comes to I, I don't know if like arc has i've never really joined a public arc server so i can't really say how that works but most people like have their own dedicated situation so they pay for their own dedicated server then boom the, you know they all play on and, and whatnot um are you gonna f allow other companies to allow your game to be dedicated like hosted by themselves on a dedicated server or no so with the way because it's like an mmo and the right server that, that wouldn't really different, work. yeah um the kind of thing that we're looking at right now is having people the possibility of having people kind of rent the servers from us okay and then expose a certain amount of options that 
would kind of dictate what's going on with the server. Just because with the whole architecture being a lot different than a traditional game like Ark or Rust, where things are kind of set in stone and it's a smaller player base per server, and it's a lot different than the game that we're creating here. I like that idea because it's more you're kind of interacting with like the developers. So if you ever need help, because a lot of times when it comes to dedicated servers, especially is you're dealing with like server hosted companies, which is great. Like, cause I, I deal with NetRado exclusively for all my hosted stuff and it's awesome. But if you're dealing with you directly, then if there's any issues with whatnot, then you're kind of able to kind of look at it and say, okay, we found the problem. It turned out that you know, we found a bug in blankety blank blank kind of thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It helps you out as well too. The other thing I was yeah. going to suggest, um, which I don't know if this is like something that you would consider um, would be a VIP spot in your server. So hypothetically, I pay, you know, a subscription of four ninety nine monthly in order to guarantee my spot in a server. So that way, that ser that server now is at four hundred and ninety nine guaranteed out of five hundred. You know what I mean? There's always that one spot available as long as I'm actively paying for that i don't know if is that something that you would consider as well too or no or is that kind of like too complicated i guess um i think it's a little early on for that but yeah i, I, I was mean, just kind of thinking ahead of time yeah. like because i you yeah. <laughs> know yeah, we're trying to like yeah. learn about like aesthetics and all this stuff and i'm just like okay here let's think about this and this <laughs> but i think I mean, it's, this yeah this will definitely be uh questions for ryan that's more of like a uh, his uh specialty but sure. i mean these are definitely very valid questions and um, as we continue to have more streams like this, like definitely bring these up. Yeah, it just helps to kind of, <laughs> can I get more paper to take all these notes? <laughs> I think it's just, it's nice because that's what you see on like a lot of World of Warcraft stuff. That's why generally people pay for like a lot of the subscriptions, not only for, for that, but for the fact that they have generally like a guarantee. I don't know actually how that works on their servers because it's not like that, but I mean, it would just would be more of like an added f bonus feature. And even if you said something like, okay, you know, four ninety nine. You have a guaranteed spot on the server, plus you have a guaranteed like in-game item skin or something like that. I think that would be more guaranteed. To, I definitely would pay something like that, even if it was lower fee than that as well too. Like if the server hosting was you know a hundred dollars a month for you, but everybody paid three dollars for a guaranteed VIP spot per month. I think that's you know you're paying for the server plus you're paying for everything else as well too. Okay, so let's start another. Uh, Let's start another yep. little raid here. I so know. we're going to get a siege going. I'll give you kind of uh, more powerful weapons this time, just because okay. as the base is uh, a lot more fortified. But um, yeah, I mean, these are all things that we're going to be taking a look at. And as you know, development progresses, it's going to be something that we kind of find the right fit for us. Mm -hmm. But we're definitely open to hearing feedback and kind of suggestions on what other people, especially streamers um, who will be streaming the game, kind of think. Because when it comes to stuff like having drops or having specific servers that are being hosted by um, us, we'll, we'll kind of want to know beforehand what would be very useful to not only the player base, but content creators too. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I think I'm just trying to think ahead of the game so then that way, like if you, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you guys are way ahead of what I'm ever thinking, but I'm just kind of, it's always nice to know the, these answers then that way, you know, when the game comes out, if we go into a server and invest a lot of time and then we can't get on that server because it's like, you know, now it's just like overpopulated or something, especially if it's mm -hmm. a server with like a really good ping comparably to like other ones, it just might be uh, something that I would definitely consider for sure. But I mean, it just depends, I guess. Um, I was actually yeah. watching a YouTube video of like a reveal of your game and you were mentioning something like uh, the, the, like the skins for the I, like the guns or something were available for on the workshop but like ever they're actually yours or something I, I i don't know i was kind of like briefly looking at the youtube video and they were saying somebody i think the youtuber commented like i think i've seen these these guns before or something like that and you said oh those are actually ours we you know we had them made in the game and now like they're on the workshop to use on for other games is that something that is that actually true i don't I, I kind yeah, of just, yeah yeah so okay. uh ryan is also the owner of iron belly studios uh, which does both contract work, but also releases stuff on the marketplace. Um, so there's a lot of guns and a lot of animations and a lot of stuff that has helped kind of fund the game through, you know, him introducing these things to the marketplace for other people to um, kind of implement into their game. And so a re one of the reasons why he brought that up is because a lot of games are kind of releasing um, with assets that Iron Belly 
made themselves. So when people are seeing multiple assets in the game, they're like, hey, like, where is this coming from? So at first they thought like, oh, maybe we were just using assets from the marketplace and that they weren't specifically ours. But um, when it came to those assets, for example, Iron Belly owns them, releases them on marketplaces, and you will see them in other games. That's awesome. PUBG, for example, released those assets. Oh, yeah. That's that's really cool. That like, Because I... Cause I, I I did a little bit of, you know, I did a little bit of homework, right? <laughs> I was like, okay, I got to watch at least like one YouTube video uh, to kind of like get a little bit started on what kind of questions I need to ask and whatnot. But I mean, I never really like, <laughs> I'm always more, more just like skimmed through and I heard that. I was like, all right, that's pretty sweet. Um, so another question I was having, so I run, I'm over here, I'm running around, I'm jumping like crazy. I keep getting winded, whatnot. Do I use more, do I use more water and more food by running around or am I using the same amount as if I st stood still the entire time? I believe it's the same right now. Um, there are plans to change that though, so that the more energy you use, the the more your stats decrease. Okay. Um, the When it comes to that system, that's being implemented as well, along with uh, the talent system. So as things progress, those systems will kind of be implemented and I guarantee by the time we play again and we stream again, there'll probably be something implemented that wasn't implemented today. Awesome. Okay. Uh, are we ready for the another for the secondary horde? Yep. Yeah, so let it. me go see if we have this. Kawhi's got uh, her axe in her hand. She's ready to go. So what are some like big changes that you've that um are on like the horizon also I, I don't know if i was that the reason why i was asking for a ping was because i'm getting like a little bit of stuttering and like the game i was just kind of curious if it was like my ping to the server or whatnot that's why i was kind of asking about the ping not that it really matters it's it, like i said i know it's a test server so it's not really like anything i can take a stick at but i was just curious um but like what are other like some big changes that you guys have like coming to the game um coming soon oh I, also i was curious for those spawners can you destroy the spawners or is it are they guaranteed to be there until the like the, the horde is over so those are guaranteed to be there uh until the horde is over okay and do you use stamina when you're using um weapons and whatnot or no uh n no so good, it's good i like um, that <laughs> one thing so I don't it know. so it wouldn't be you wouldn't be using uh, stamina from firing a uh, gun. Good, um, good. But if you're jumping, uh, sprinting, stuff like that. So then, in the in the utility class, like the when we were looking it up before, the different skills part. How do I um, how do I like add different stats and stuff? Does that just later on through XP and stuff? So yeah, that'll be later on through the kind of like leveling or player progression system uh, that needs to be implemented first for stuff like that to be gone through. Okay. Let me just see, is there a way to toggle how fast I'm able to move my mouse around? Uh, brightness, field of view, Goals, mouse sensitivity, there we go. There we go. Yeah, the looks of this game is really, really nice, Aki. It's definitely, the one thing I like about it is it has a lot of features from a ton of other games that I enjoy as well too. So it's very nice to kind of see, um, like when I was actually looking just at the YouTube video alone, um, the one thing, oh sorry, before I get ahead of myself, um, mm -hmm. The one thing I was curious about when you, so I don't know if this is kind of just a feature of the game itself, but when you are, for example, you have a, you have a mutant that's coming at you right now, right? I don't know if it's just me, but like, do, will they eventually be a little bit quicker than that or? Yeah. So okay. the, um, when it comes to the, um, AI, that's like still like a work in progress, like the range okay. and stuff and how, how quick and kind of like their attack stuff. That's, that's going to be something that changes quite okay. a bit. Cause even like the, even the shooting, like your. The animation of like shooting the gun seems very like 
It, it maybe it's just not fast. Maybe I'm just too used to back for blood. I don't know, <laughs> but that's okay. Like the the animations of them running slower was kind of all my my real question. But yeah, I was saying like the it's nice to see um, a take from multiple different games to apply like your own uh, spin on it. I think that's really really cool because that's kind of like what is always um, is always nice to see. It's like very refreshing to be like okay, like we saw this in another area and we decided to like take this and kind of put our own spin on it. It's really cool. I like that a lot. Like, I think it's important to, um, like, look at other games and be like, you know, th this was done right here, this was done right there. Yeah. Um, look at some stuff that might not have been kind of, like, implemented right and be like, well, how can we kind of improve on those types yeah. of systems? Yeah, that's basically, like, you know, that's how it should be, right? Always, always trying to mm -hmm. improve and make something you want to spin on and make it better. Oof. I love that sound. So is that just an, another indication that there's another wave coming? Yep. Yeah. Do the weapons have add-ons or stuff to personalize them? Are they like skill trees and stuff? Uh, yeah. So can you can you customize the weapons at all or? So currently there are weapon attachments. So stuff like hollow sights, uh, magnifier sights. Uh, Extended clip or extended mag, and then uh, laser sight stuff like that. Um, I don't know how deep we're going to be going into customization of weapons per se, but mm -hmm. um, that'll definitely be something that we release more information as time goes on. Okay. So the one thing that I was commenting on about the the guns, like you have a shotgun on you right now. So if you uh, if you shoot the shotgun like consistently, and then you go to reload. Like, is the reload animation ever going to be quicker than that? Or is that basically how fast it will always be for the reload animation? So like, for example, if I have like 17 mutants running at me and I go to mm -hmm. shoot them all at once, um, I'm assuming, I'm just trying to look at, yeah, maybe it's just, maybe it's just cause there's a little bit lag on the server. I'm not too sure. But okay, I guess you don't want to have it too fast because then it's kind of making it easier to kind of quick reload and quick shoot back again, but. Like I said, it's hard to say. Oh, I thought that was my dog for a Yeah, second. sorry about that. Yes, yeah, Saber's just going nuts because I think the food just got here. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, the shotguns, like, the guns look really, really nice. That's another thing I was going to comment on, on how nice the guns were. Like, I like the way that the light uh, comes in the game as well, too. Now, um, when it comes to graphics, for example... All right, give me one second. Mm -hmm. Let me close my door. When it comes to, like, the lighting looks really, really nice and all that stuff. When it comes to graphics, um, do you have where at a certain distance the game unloads graphics? Like, it doesn't actually load past a certain distance? Because I see, you can still see the shadows and, like, the, the trees and stuff in the distance, which is really nice. But does that, I haven't, like, obviously, like, played around with the settings at all. But mm -hmm. does that show yeah, up any setting or any graphics or, or anything at all? Um, if... I mean, if it depends on your view distance that you have set, but oh, okay. it does offload. It does offload stuff. Um, if you lower it, you'll view be distance. able to get more frames. Yeah, let's see view distance, field of view. No, uh, view distance. Where's view distance? Oh, sorry. Uh, view distance quality or. Yep. So if you lower it from epic to high. Uh, you'll notice um, some stuff start to pop out. Okay. There are stuff that is kind of reserved, so it's like really far stuff you kind of want to see. Otherwise, it, it wouldn't look right. But it okay. will reduce uh, certain assets, so you will get more frames back with that a little bit lower. Okay. Um, as well as the graphics is something, it's like an ongoing optimization thing that is happening between like uh, now and release just because like new assets coming in new graphics new yeah are being worked on that's what i was curious tweaked. about because i when i actually have my graphics set on low um it seems to i wonder if it's just uh let's just try to be sync on if it makes a difference no it doesn't so my graphics are currently on low mm -hmm. um across the board and it caps at 62 frames per second so that's why i was curious like okay is there a way to make it higher than 60 and make it like go above that or 
Maybe I believe just... I believe it's capped to sixty, but you have to use like a console command to to push it past that. Oh, okay. But, yeah. So maybe that's why I'm not feeling the 144 hertz, because it's mm -hmm. not, it's capped at sixty. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, so because ideally, the yeah, down the road, like I'm sure you guys are going to support more. Um, I'm sure you guys are going to support like higher than sixty fps. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. just if if it wasn't kind of capped and we released something that kind of didn't like uh wasn't really optimized enough it would be mm -hmm. constant like back and forth on the frames and it would just be a little bit too choppy oh and also it does show from what i can tell i don't know it says milliseconds so i'm guessing that is the ping 16 milliseconds i'm assuming it's const constantly refreshing it looks like yeah it is no, yeah. that's that's oh, that? uh it's actually frame amount like uh if you wanted the actual ping, you'd have to go. You'd have to do like another command. I think it's like netstat or something, but it okay. kind of brings up a bunch of stuff. But if you go to the main screen, I believe it's in the UI at the bottom. But that's when you're in the main menu. Oh, okay, like at the main menu of the game. Yep. Okay, that's okay. No, no problem. Okay. Well, I'm thinking we'll make our way to the dungeon now. Um, so I was say, we just killed the we just killed that thing, so we're all good. Burn all the bodies. Let's see where. Before is we go, the... let's craft a little bit more. Okay. Wait, did I move my torch somewhere? Maybe I. Left. Oh, I should get my other canteen. Do torches on the wall only have so much burn time? Or would it so just right destroy now it? they'll unlimitedly like it's unlimited. Oh, perfect. Good, 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 yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. Yep. Um, where did I put my canteens? Oh, there you are. Maybe. Oh, So before we leave the base, uh, I put a crafting bench in front of the door. Um, so take up the hollow site and the scar before we leave. Ooh, okay. Is there an end game objective? Is the pure like sandbox survival? That's one question that Aki was curious about. So like, is there, is there like an end game? Um... So there, there will be end game type stuff planned. Uh, I just don't have specifics at this point right now. Okay. Um, how do you attach the hollow to... I might have just dropped on the ground. So right now, with the way it works, because the uh, system's still being implemented, so equip the um, scar. Okay. So like, put it into your hotbar, uh, yep. equip it, and then double-click on the hollow site. It'll auto-equip it to the um, thing. That's the, oh, easy, okay. that's the fastest way. Okay. Um, do you have the ability to... I'm sure that's probably under settings to auto so you don't have to hold down right in order to shoot the toggle ads yeah that toggle i HUD. don't believe so but that is a really good suggestion yeah so like if that way you don't have to hold down right like when you're shooting yeah uh looks like uh fernando if he's in chat definitely write that one down for me <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, see, this has, so that's what I was saying. When you have the, this, for example, you have the crosshair, um, it would be really nice to have that on just the, I know, I guess, because you, you have the crosshair because you have, um, because you have the hollow sight. But if, when you have the arrow, like the bow and arrow, it'd be nice to have like a tiny little crosshair, just something like very generic that like even a dot or something just to indicate that, you know. I also notice that there's like spores coming from this. Does that just mean because we're supposed to be burning the body? That, but also they're poisonous, so they will. Uh, I mean, they won't when they're dead, but they do have the ability to cause toxicity damage to you. Can you just can you dispose the body by like ooh, raw meat? If you, yep. can you can you eat them? Yeah, you can eat them. Um, there is no specific like it's not like mutant meat right now, but. So it's just uh, generic. It's so like, cause that's what I was, generic. that's what I was going to say. Cause it looks like generic meat, which you get from the deer. So we don't care as long as it's has a little meat to it. All right, let's go to the so dungeon. Did your, did your friend, uh, Quiet, did you grab a gun as well too?
might want to pick up some more it's safe too. to log out here it is quite yeah yeah oh quite has, has to go back to work okay uh, okay yeah no problem yeah, um just log dungeon, out yeah so don't log out too close to a wall because right now um once you lay down it kind of has you um outside of the building but that's that's being fixed as well it looks like it's just us on this adventure let's go so how do we find the dungeons just by so right now there's no like uh type thing where it's like labeled on the map um so i know where we're going but um eventually we might look into adding something like that but um, if there's something like a fog of war thing, oh yeah, I, I'll be changing the time of day. Okay. Is anybody else on the server other than just us? Yep, there's some other people on. <laughs> Are they just like, wow, the server just <laughs> changed back to day? Yeah, I yeah. Sometimes I I I hope that doesn't become an issue. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be heading back. Uh, kind of like the way where like uh, the Thorcon is and just going down to the construction area and kind of passing that. I'm going to be taking you to the waterfall cave. Are you planning on having other, well, I don't, I guess I probably shouldn't say planning. Do you have, are there any other, um, are, are there any other animals other than deer? So there's squirrels, raccoons, um, deer, there's boars, um, there's mutant dogs. There's, I think there's also there's also cats as well. Those are actually rare. Um, I believe they're also invincible right now. So Ooh, cats, you, you know, can't kill a cat. Oh, nice, nice. No, good, definitely, good. definitely can't. Yeah, let, let's leave I that. Think, let's uh, never let, allow anybody to kill cats. <laughs> oh, yep. Logos is right. Definitely cats. Cats and rats. I mean, uh, definitely uh, rats. Yeah. Can you can you tame a cat to have it kill a rat, and then you can have like some endless food? I'm no, just kidding. <laughs> Ignore that. <laughs> I'm gonna no, that's uh, it's nothing. Oh nothing that complex. Uh, but, yeah. uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, the extent of like what we're gonna be having, because uh, usually people ask us is like the first thing they ask is like, will there be taming? Will there be stuff like that? But uh, no taming, nothing like that. There is plans for like having like uh, robots with like our fabrication system. Mm. Um, so we'll be in, we'll be introducing that in. Um, at we're, some point but we're passing sorry we're passing by these homes are these people's buildings or are these like places that we can loot so these are places we can loot we can actually go inside real okay quick. cool Do a Almost, quick detour. Yeah. character is super out of breath oh that's another thing can if you run with sorry i think i asked you this it doesn't matter if you run with a gun or with a with a regular tool you still um, yep still the same stays. stamina use okay. and uh Right now, proning will be the quickest way for you to gain your stamina back. Okay, so I'll prone all the way to the to the dungeon. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, I like these houses. They're really nice. Um, sorry, we were talking about something. You're talking about taming, and then we were mentioning about um animals. Robots. Robots. Yes, robots. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So the plan is to have a fabrication type system where you're able to do uh manufacture robots uh the extent of what that'll mean is still something that's being worked on but uh that is definitely the plan nothing like taming or breeding or stuff like you find in like arc or other games okay cool 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 oh i also see like a red rock here so that's a uh, sulfur watch out they're coming Of course they choose to go after you and not me. <laughs> so could you choose to take over a building and just live there? Or is it a structure only like a... Sorry, can a um, thing only... I really like this. This is really cool that there's actually stuff. In it. So, are, are are these lootable right now or not lootable right now? So if you come into this one, this one has loot in it. Um, not all containers are guaranteed to have loot. Mm -hmm. um, but usually, like what you'll find is clothes. You'll find um, currency. You'll find food items, stuff like that. 
Um, and then the further north you go, the um, better loot. But as for like taking over a home, you cannot, it's like a no build zone. So if you took out your construction tool, you wouldn't be able to build anything here. Oh, what's this? Potatoes? Open container. Oh. Run. I don't know what I just picked up. Uh, whole beats. I'm poisoned, I think. So yeah, now we have poison bars. My... Okay. Yeah. Come to this area that I marked with the gun, and I dropped an antidote for you. Okay. Um, did mine need marker on my map? Wait, is that? Is... Yeah, the red marker seems to be gone on my map for some odd reason. Or yeah, that's a that's a bug. Um, it's been Hard happening to tell for where a bit, I'm going. but. Yeah. Um. Yep, I see you. Uh, yeah. There you go. Okay, I see you now. Thanks for the healing. Wait, did we? Oh, did you heal me? Uh, no, no. Uh, you probably oh, I see lost it. the yeah. Probably okay. went uh, went away over time, but you should still take it. If I double click on it, or is there a use for right click? Nope, that drops it again. Um, how do I use it when it's in my inventory? So oh, you still have to equip um, it in order to do it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a way to bring up the mouse uh, the context menu. Um, you have to have like a mouse that has like the side buttons. It's like one of those side buttons. Oh, okay. So that needs to be remapped. Yeah, um, for sure. And implemented differently. All right, so here I'll lead. As you'll see, there's more uh, iron nodes here as well. Yeah, there's definitely a lot more. So do you find our dungeons like sporadic, like across the map kind of thing, or? Like, so currently there there's uh three three or four dungeons that we have implemented none of uh not all of them are fleshed out mm -hmm. the one i'm going to take you to is the waterfall cave they are sporadic and they are spread out um and there's going to be a lot more planned with them as things move forward okay do you th are there is there ever going to be a thing where it's like um where you get kind of like a you know like a quest and then like uh, Kind of like similar to seven days where you have like a parchment that kind of says like hey you mm -hmm. know guess what you have a quest coming up and like you can go and do a dungeon kind of thing or is it mainly just going to be like dungeons like for example like if i get if we have 500 people on the server and there's three dungeon areas mm -hmm. and then we go to that dungeon and it's being used will it render a different dungeon for us while those other people are still in it or will we have to wait till they're finished in order to complete that dungeon again so that is the plan for some dungeons. So that's what we'd call like an instant dungeon. Yeah. Where once you enter, it's kind of specific to the players or party that enter it. Um, that is that is a plan that's not implemented right now. Right now, it's just like whoever comes in it comes in. Um, which ones will become instants? I'm not entirely sure, but we'll have more information about that once um, things move forward. Okay. But there, there essentially will be both. Yeah, because instances are always like really, really cool to do. Um, obviously, like it's kind of like a you know dungeons. More people like obviously enjoy doing that because there's usually more interaction and like new stuff mm -hmm. that happens. So, so are you for like wildlife and and everything? Are you staying kind of? I know like the the big thing is staying true to Hawaii and, and all that stuff. Are like will we will we see anything outside of like the normal uh, type of like animals and stuff, or will it always be? Um, stuff like that. It's like will ever because I know you said you, you mentioned mutant dogs, I believe. Um, like will there ever be mutant like, bears and stuff, or like will there so ever there be, will be water animals? There will be stuff? some creative um, freedom for certain things, but it'll be tied into the lore of the game. Okay. So if it's not really specific to Hawaii, it'll be considered in, in, uh, invasive. Right. Um, and it'll be something that's tied into the lore that you'll be able to kind of like check out and like. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I like how that 
Because like that that makes more sense to me. That is yeah, it's like invasive species kind of thing. That that's kind of something that I was thinking about. Because like a lot of MMOs will have something like, you know, there's too many of these in this area. Like go and take care of them, kind of thing. Like you know, rid them out of this area, sort of thing. Like they're invading again, and then you go and like kill them, and then, you know, that's part of a quest or something like that. Yeah. So if you open up your map. Um you'll see uh, like kind of like an intersection of the water, so like the river. Mm -hmm. That's essentially where we're going to be heading towards. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, that thing died right away. <laughs> Are the shotguns pretty powerful? I, like, they seem pretty dang powerful. Yeah. Uh, also, like there's the range isn't really limited on them. It's not uh, at all. I was just shoot yeah. I was shooting deer from like 400 miles away. <laughs> I guess I could probably crank up my field of view again. Um, where is that at? Or wait, I guess I did crank it up. That's okay. And this is also based on the uh, um, actual, like, um, what is it? Geographical map of Maui. It's like where they use, like, the LiDAR data. Okay. Um, so a lot of what you're seeing is something that was taken um, online and then put into World Machine and kind of smoothed out certain areas to kind of be as true as we can to the island. Oh, that's really cool. Is this where we're going right here, this big house? Nope. So we're going to be going past that. Okay. So These buildings look really, really nice. I like how intricate they are. Um, so... Back to water um, things. Are you planning on adding? I might die here. Are you planning on adding like sharks and stuff? Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. Okay. Um. So there, we had like a poll on like what people wanted to see when it came to like what we'd work on next. Um. So we did have water on that, but people were actually asking for us to focus on the land. Yeah, so, yeah. I think it's. I think that's probably agreeable too. Is that you don't want to mm -hmm. be putting too much effort into like, you know, something in the water that could potentially kill you, versus something on land. Because it's not like really many people are going to be ending up in the water as it is, anyways. Mm -hmm. But it is something that we will be re revisiting and fleshing out um, as things move forward. Because it, it it will definitely get to a point where we do need to focus on that. But the main focus right now has been on the land and monuments and stuff like that yeah land for sure because i was gonna say like it might be interesting to do like a quest that is i don't know if you are ever going to do it like under like something like a underwater cave or something like that like you go in, under the water go into a cave and then like it's under there or something or like on a smaller island or you know that requires like a some sort of raft to get there or something it might be interesting but i don't know i guess after all it's an eight times eight kilometer map yeah so i mean it could be um like later on, but yeah, definitely land for sure. Ooh, cool. So I definitely took you the long way. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, but it still worked out. So uh, obviously, like uh, oh, the waterfall. in every game, yeah, definitely might be something hiding behind that. You know? <laughs> is there an interactive way to climb a ladder, or is it kind of just you just jump on the ladder and then that's that's it for you? I don't see like an E to climb. It's more of like jump up the ladder, I guess. Yeah. So right now it's just jump. Um, there are ladders, but they're um, they're only in very specific areas, and I don't think all of them are working. Okay. Yeah, um, that one doesn't well, seem to be working. Yeah, but we're not in the area that would require us to use it. Okay. Before we go in there, <laughs> we need to put down a sleeping bag. Oh, right, right, right. So that way we spawn back out here. Yep. Yep. I definitely really like, I mean, everything about this game is just like so, you know, like interesting. Like the the graphics are nice. Like the interacting is nice. It's like, it's just, I, I think it's one of those things like it definitely has like an insane, like amazing foundation right now. And like the more you add to it, it's just making it like better and better and better and better and better over time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah. it's definitely, it's got, it's got like insane major potential for sure. Um, if I click on this bedroll, will that take over yours or... I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, it says, let's, let's call this one waterfall. I would put down one just in case. Okay. There you go. Drop, 
dropped it right here, right beside me. If I eat raw meat, does that matter? Well, I actually have charcoal meat over here anyways. Uh, yeah. If you eat too much raw meat, you'll get poisoned. Okay. Ooh, there's like shards of glass. Can we mine that? Um, not currently. Um, let's see. Did you put down your sleeping bag back here? Uh, uh, I just stole the one that you put on the ground. I just clicked on it and put active. I don't know. I just do. I have to place my own down. Um, just to be, just in case, I would. Okay. Picked up the sham and the antibiotic shot. Um, how do I make my own bedroll? Uh, I dropped one right here. You okay. need cloth and. Try resealing. Oh goodness. <laughs> yeah. Um, where's the bed? Oh, there it is. Should also get water while we're here too. I that's one thing I always suck at with survival games is like keeping hydrated. Yeah, me too. Which would kill you in real life. <laughs> so how do I refill the water bottles? Or the oh there it is. Never mind. It says right there. Eat a fill. Yep. Here we go. But I mean, I I love the questions you've had so far and the suggestions. It'll everything that uh, you've definitely mentioned is something we'll be taking a look at. Yeah, for sure. Forward. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I do have to take off pretty pretty soon, but I want to get into the this thing. And then, like I said, if if anything comes forward where you're like, hey, we got a little bit more time to do another stream, you know, it's been like another few updates since our last one. You know, I'm definitely down to take another look at it again because I mean, it definitely seems like a game that a lot of people in chat will for sure try. Yeah, sounds good. Ooh, there's a little ro special rock. Whoa. Yep, special yeah. rock. We do need to be careful in here. It is a PvP zone. I can't um, even see. Are we just relying? Do I have a torch on me? Uh... Um, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, you need a torch. Okay, I was going to say, I had a I'll torch. I'll come back at. I thought you were already on the nope. rock. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. So, so when you activate the dungeon, it activates PvP? Automatically, once you're in the area of the um, dungeon light, that's zone, good. That's good. So, yep. so if I were okay, so you're in a dungeon, you're in a dungeon, you die. Um, I spawn back on my bedroll. I go back in the dungeon, and that's the only way that I can actually get my stuff. But if we're in the dungeon and we open this rock, I'm, I guess we'll have to wait and see. I don't want to say, but I'm assuming mm -hmm. this whole rock's gonna open up. And say if we die in there, will we be able to go back in? So, I, sorry, I guess my yeah. question is getting a little complicated. Like, we start this dungeon, I die in it, I'm like, oh no, I died. Then all of a sudden, 50 other people come in here, they start the dungeon. Then will my stuff not be able to be retrieved until they're finished that dungeon, or...? So, as so, so if you enter, you'll teleport in. Mm -hmm. um, it's per... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, hold on. Don't don't teleport in yet. I'm I'm fighting a bunch of them. Ooh, are you in there right now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm missing out. I gotta go in. Oh, okay. Wait, yep. I did. Okay, you can first. come in. You can come in. Okay. Going in. Okay. Oh, so please, to answer your question, um, everything's persistent in this dungeon. It's it is not instant, so it does not get restarted while you're in it. Okay. Um, or while someone initiates it. So. Oh. oh. Cool. Uh -oh. Are these real boars or mutated boars? These are just normal boars. I also like use all my ammo on deer when, when we're walking. <laughs> okay, so I, I got some, so I'll okay, um, good, yeah, good. Some. I couldn't help but shoot those deer. They're just standing there. They looked interesting. They looked they look like they could be I don't know mutant deer. It's hard to say. Okay, so you will theory. notice this dungeon is really dark. This was actually uh, a bug originally, um, mm -hmm. where it was actually supposed to be lit. And one of our Spanish streamers decided, he's like, you know what, that's not going to stop me. Um, so he actually went in and did the whole um, dungeon with just him and one other person. And the other person was like the dedicated uh, torchbearer. Wow. Yep. And this was before we implemented the um flare gun so i'm gonna be using the flare gun i like how like the the 
So one thing that I really do like is this like um, bioluminescence, like like rocks. Like that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I I think, yeah. Like I actually like how how dark the dungeon is. Honestly, I think it is nice. Cause you're in a cave, right? They gotta shouldn't be able to yeah. see anything. Yep. And it definitely adds another element. To the it game. does. I gotta yeah. try not to try not to shoot you. Oh my, yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> Uh-oh. No. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna try to save you. If I can get to you in 30 seconds. Oh no. <laughs> You're dead. Oh, uh, I just... geez. Um, well, I think that's probably a good place to, to end it. And next time we jump on, we can probably show like more of the dungeon and whatnot as well mm -hmm. too. Yeah, um, and I th I think especially since it's like it was just me and you, I yeah. think next time uh, we'll get together, we'll get a few more people, kind of get okay. the community involved. Uh, awesome. It'll definitely definitely be a really fun time. But I appreciate all the questions and all the amazing suggestions you have. Yeah. Um, and appreciate everything your chat has been asking too um that's like the that's like perfect for us because we want to kind of gauge what people are kind of thinking but also what kind of things or concerns they might have because i mean it is it is early access um i mean closed closed alpha so yeah uh, it's very important to kind of get these suggestions and concerns kind of early on that way we can kind of address them before we release something and we're kind of surprised i think it's nice that Normally when you hear things of like, oh, it's closed alpha or whatnot, it's very like, do not stream our game, do not, you you know, do not present it, blah, 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 blah. I think it's a nice take on go ahead and stream our game, like, and we'll be there with you while you do so. So that way we can kind of get these answers that we need or like questions asked. Because a mm -hmm. lot of times I always feel like not just, you know, I'm sure like other devs have other things and agendas but i think it's nice that this is kind of a different take on it because you're like really like welcoming like constructive criticism instead of just being like well you know here it is and yeah show your bugs exactly like like kind of show the show the side that's like hey look this is what is going on but we know about it and we're going to be fixing it we're going to be implement implementing it because i think most people realize that this is you know it's not the finished it's far from the finished product uh product so it's like it's nice to to be able to kind of see you know grow a, a along the way as well too so yeah but i appreciate like letting me like play the game for sure it's really nice and like i said a lot if you ever in the future i'm sure there's going to be other opportunities but if anything else comes up and you definitely want me to try it out again i'm 100 percent down for sure thousand percent yeah down. yeah i i completely agree and i i, I think uh ryan probably mentioned this to you as well as like we're making sure we're as transparent as possible and making sure everyone is it, feels like they're a part of the development in that sense where they're kind of seeing it in the rough state that it is for certain things but they also see that it has such a strong foundation and they can kind of grow with the game and kind of provide input and kind of see it kind of moving along while they're making these suggestions right and i feel like that's something you don't really get with most games or most game companies so it's like that's i mean but it definitely is our motto we do want people to see the progress as it progresses and it's if there are bugs, we will show it. We'll be like, hey, we're aware of these. We are working on it. Like, we appreciate all your bug reports, all your suggestions and feedback and concerns. And it's something that we're definitely taking to heart and definitely taking a deep look at. Yeah, for sure. And like I said, it's it's very nice to see. It's a very, like, transitional thing to say, to be like, okay, you know, this is our open book, like, write, help write the pages kind of thing. So it's nice about that. But all right, well, appreciate it. Thanks again. And uh, thanks again, Jenny. I know that you're on lunch right now, but thanks again for joining in with us and playing as well, too. Um, but yeah, I look yeah. forward to playing again with you in, in the future and uh, shooting more deer. <laughs> we still yeah, might and, uh, Definitely check out our Kickstarter. We are, I think we're like 60% uh, to the goal. And it's only been like a few days now. So yeah, uh, I definitely think check that out. I think a few of uh, people from our community already like kickstart help kickstart as well too. So thank you to anybody that did that. I know a few people did it in the chat right now. So appreciate yeah, that as well. Thank too. you so much. And yeah. it, it it it'll have more information there on what is coming up, and then it will be releasing continuous updates on what what to look out for and what will be worked on next. Awesome. 
All right, well, appreciate it. I I will catch you later on. Like I said, if, if you have any questions, just ask, or if you mm-hmm. want to know more about that, um, you know, drop system and all that stuff or any questions on that, feel free to like pick my brain and I'll do the same with you in the future as well too. Oh, definitely. Well, have awesome. a good one, everyone, and good night. And thank you so much. All right, thank you. Later. All right, chat, that's it for me. I hope you have an awesome one. Thank you guys for being so awesome when, and asking all the questions in chat. I really appreciate it. I know that I didn't really like respond too much in chat like I normally do. So, you know, thanks for kind of, you know, helping with that. I really, really, really appreciate it. I will do stream readers after the stream's over. Uh, I gotta I gotta go. Rachel's like, <laughs> I, could, I could see Rachel upstairs because she's been with Fiona. So I wanna hurry up and, and get up there and help her out so she can get some dinner. Um, but I will be back later on tonight. I probably will come back closer to 11, uh, most likely. Um, but thank you fractured veil for giving me the awesome opportunity to try your game. I really appreciate it. I think this is like the first time that I've ever had a chance to actually like play with the dev alongside in the game, like getting developed and stuff. So it was really, really cool. Um, I will put it, be putting this on YouTube as well too, uh, with the permission of them, of course. Uh, so look forward to that. If you guys didn't get a chance to watch it, I'll always put that on. Of course, the Kickstarter, uh, link for Fracture Veil is going to be, um, uh, pinned on discord as well too. So, um, you know, feel free to take a look there if you guys want to help out with that as well too. An excellent all right, my friend. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks again. Brandon, nice playing with you. Nice meeting you as well, too. For now, you see you, too. You get to play with them daily. <laughs> Have a great one. I will hope you guys come back later on. I'll be back in about three hours. See everybody then. Bye, everybody.